Cool. Hello. And Hello. Welcome to our uh, hopefully short little uh, delve into the creator. Yes, the creator, a.k.a. where the fuck is China? Where the hell is China <laughs> in where, all this? Yeah, where is uh, it? Written and directed by Gareth Edwards. He did, well, he first started out doing a little film called Monsters, mm-hmm. which was kind of like the indie darling of the sci-fi so it was, it was world kind for of, a little bit, wasn't it? Wasn't it kind of like an icon of like, look what you can do with like... Uh, a small modest budget but they made like essentially a big a big impressive film or like you know mid-tier by today's standards yeah I mean um, as in terms of budget and scale but like going from there and Hollywood noticing and being like you got talent kid I like ya yeah it was one of those ones yeah where like it was released back in 2010 and it was one of those, it was kind of that kind of, it was before like franchises came out. So yeah. it was a little bit like the Wild West of like sci fi. And Gareth Edwards did this really lovely, like you said, very low budget. Well, what we would consider low budget, I think. Well, let's have a little look actually. What's his, what's his budget for that? Uh, half a mil. 500,000, that's nothing. Uh, but he also, oh. but he wrote, directed it, he edited it. I think mm-hmm. he did some of the visual effects for it. A he, real auteur kind of piece. Yeah, like really he, put his... It's him. Really put his name out there. And then after that, I mean, fucking Hollywood were like, Monsters? Godzilla? Yeah, we're doing Godzilla. You want to go? <laughs> you want to go? And he was you like, wanna go? fuck but, yeah, I, I mean, do. I'll, I mean, God, I'll try. Uh, and we'll also get Brian Cranston in it as well. Yeah, yeah okay. and Ken Watanabe. Yeah, Ken, Ken Watanabe, again. Yeah. He's also in it as well. Aaron Taylor-Johnson starring and uh, uh, Elizabeth Olsen as well. Yeah, so fair, so, fair, so we've been looking at his career yeah. for quite a while. And mm-hmm. uh, so far, quite impressed. It seems that he's a very high concept guy. Uh, has a lot of good like visuals. Uh, hasn't quite pulled off a really really good film yet. No, but no, he's, yeah. But he but he's clearly got a good vision. He's got a lot of sort of world building in him. Yeah. He's got a good. He's got a lot of lore that he wants to kind of deposit mm-hmm. on his filmmaking. And this is kind of his first big, big independent film where yeah. this is like it's not attached to a franchise. This is sort of his own sort of law, his own world, and he's kind of like going for it. And rightly so, he's been given a good budget for it. Like he's got a good, he's got this pretty good track record. What is the budget? Is it like 80 mil? No, let's have a little look. I think it's, which is like absolutely Ah. nothing by Hollywood's Marvel, Star Wars. How much money did you spend? How much money? Yeah, 80 mil. Yeah, bang 80 on. mil, there we go. Bang on, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Oh, um, my God. That was, yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, which again is like, yeah, do you remember that, like, uh, you know, big Hollywood films can be made for that much, not like 350 mil. Yeah. Like, not, because we're not doing thousands of reshoots and we're not, which is weird to say about this film, which we'll get into, but like, we're not going crazy on CGI. Um, yes. Which is also not. Uh, a complaint against CGI artists who aren't actually paid enough, ironically, yeah. but the whole process is expensive. But yeah, yeah, again, like 80 mil, you can make a film with scale, and this film yeah. does have scale. Like, it's a big, it's it's a blockbuster. It's supposed yeah. to be a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it, it clearly is. This is no... And uh, me and Sean have always said that, like, people are getting so fatigued and fed up of the franchise God. that it seems to be that Hollywood is now shifting very gently Mm -hmm. into a little bit more independent sort of blockbusters again, which is a great thing. I mean, we fondly remember the early 2000s and Mm -hmm. the 90s and the the 70s and the 80s where like that was just the norm. It wasn't, it wasn't franchise. It was just, I've got an idea and I've got a big sort of budget. What what do you want? Oh, I'll give you, I'll give you 80 mil or I'll give you 50 mil. Like these kind of, these kind of like... Well, we would consider it these days kind of like mid-tier kind of big hitters. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're so used to seeing Marvel films go over the kind of like 200 mil budget more. Well, considering with the news you know, of Disney lying about, about how much many they spent. Things it's like, exactly, how much they spent and how much they earned back, which is... Oh, 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 yeah. We won't go into that. But, but it's... Um, uh, it's bad. But, it's um, obvi- but there's obviously a lot of fatigue, isn't there? There's yeah. a lot of... Uh, not just for the audience, but for the studio as well. There's clearly mm-hmm. studio fatigue as well. Like They're not making as yeah. much money back and this big gamble that they've taken mm-hmm. on Disney is slightly starting to catch up, which is... Quite nice to see a film like The Creator come yes. out. Um, it feels very much like uh, taking a risk, a real risk, again. Because yeah. that's the thing. It's like, um, yeah, taking a risk on 
uh, a completely unproven thing. It's like, yep. this isn't a franchise, this hasn't been proven to make money, this is a sci-fi, which famously always makes less money than fantasy, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, funnily enough. Um, actually, I don't know. I mean, in books, I know fantasy is the king. I yeah. don't know about films. When I think about film, actually, sci-fi probably does tend to to work better I think they kind in terms of, of success. share it mm. a lot of the time because obviously we're a little bit spoiled because we had obviously the Lord of the Rings came out yeah, and that kind of broke that's... that broke the fucking rule book on everything about fantasy mm-hmm. and then Harry Potter came out yeah. and that was also another huge thing but then recently we've had Dune come out which again is a franchise but still quite yeah. I would I would say still quite a gamble quite an it's independent still quite a gamble. gamble it's the world's go... most successful sci-fi novel yeah. but it's still I remember looking at like I can't even exemplify because it's a podcast, but like in terms of like the bar, it's like you have Dune here and Lord of the Rings like here. Yeah, and Dune is still the biggest sci-fi novel ever. Yeah, um, and it's still what not... Sean did there. He did like a he did like a mid and then and then Lord of the Rings was like yeah. up in the heavens. If you had two in bars, terms of popularity, like, yeah, 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 if you had bars like Dune would be a third of what Lord of the Rings bar is mm-hmm. kind of thing. Um, so yeah, again, it's all a big. It is quite. Uh, it was quite a gamble. And what studio produced this? Twentieth century. Twentieth century, yeah. And uh, New Regency Productions, which is the same company, I believe. Oh, this is great podcasting. <laughs> the research this element. Is no, this is what the people want. They want, they, they want the the young Jamie of research. Exactly. Jerome uh, listeners will know that. Which is like uh, they did the Revenant. They did oh, Amsterdam. Dude, yeah. They've done yeah. They've done a bunch of stuff. So, so they do. So they do things as well, like the Revenant. Like yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll take risks. I think Regency. That's the logo. That's a very famous logo. Yeah, it's I very mean, famous. it's that sexy God, did they do? with the back missing. Did they do? You know, if you they did Fight Club. They did Heat. They did Heat. Yeah, dude. Okay, In so time. big. Big name. Gone Girl. Gone Girl, yeah. Sh- okay. Yeah, okay. You know, stuff. Yeah, what, Fight Club. You know what I'm seeing from this list? All quite out there films yeah. that are a little bit And the creators different. on that list yeah. now, so it didn't take a lot. It's obviously been counted. So this is, yeah, it's a lovely change of pace for, for everyone, basically. Um, How successful is the creator? How much money has it made so far? Uh, well, we're only going off the initial, because remember, it's only been out for a week. Well, it's only been out for a few weeks now, maybe two weeks. So far, it's... It's made sixty one million dollars gross. It was eighty million, so it's made what eighty percent of its budget back. Yeah. So it will definitely so, yeah. it will be fine. You think it will be fine? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, the initial hype is done. Well, there's been no. I think there's been no hype. I've seen minimal advertising for this thing. Like yeah. I've seen, I've seen on Instagram trailers for the creator. Um, particularly like a trailer that went into the art design of it, funnily enough. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, we'll get into yeah, it, but the we'll art design it. is it's, just, it's, oh, ooh, it's gorgeous. Wee. So good. Um, but, but in terms of like big trailers or anything like that, like they're yeah. not taking up YouTube space. I, I'm just surprised um, Yeah. that, for this risk but I suppose that's the thing isn't it with a lot of films is like half the budget goes into fucking marketing yeah um, I, I, this isn't that's exactly and, it and this isn't The Flash that's exactly it I think when yeah, they talk about disaster, budget but... when they talk about budget it's it's such a contextual thing because you will never really know how much is spent no. on post advertisement um, which is a huge amount like publicity yeah. and all that kind of thing is a huge expense yeah. Um and it has to be. And it does. It ways. has to be. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I got this on Instagram. Sorry. Just no, yeah, go on. Real quick. I got this on Instagram because this is absolutely up my alley. Like, I yeah. love this kind of stuff. I look uh, at... The um, algorithm listened. And the algorithm... Like, oh, you want yeah. some, like, quirky sci-fi? <laughs> one of the things, Southeast Asia? Yeah. yeah okay. One, one of the things I'm quite proud of is that the algorithm, like, for YouTube and the internet in general, doesn't know me because I do not <laughs> like things. I am not consistent at all, you know? So the algorithm never yeah, advertises... No, it, the, the algorithm doesn't know what to advertise it me. Tries. It's like, Remember I got the Mortgage Podcast? Yeah! I saw <laughs> So oh. while back on Spotify, I got and on YouTube, I got an advert for a mortgage podcast, oh, and that was again just confirmation of like you don't fucking know me. Oh, welcome <laughs> to the to, yeah. to the Barclays Mortgage. Yeah. Was, let's was, let's talk about bonds. And it was people. the guy that let's talk about fixed rate mortgages it was here the for a second. Guy who escaped from the country, I swear, escaped to the country. So oh god, yeah, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was oh, like, wow. I just I was delighted that I got this advert because I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm off the grid, mate. I mean, <laughs> that's yeah. like the closest you can the, be in terms of algorithm. The, Advertisement agencies for banks is so 
is so random because mm. on one side you've got like uh, TS, uh, so you've got Lloyd's, which refuse to get rid of the black horse. Well, that's their They're like, thing. we will die on this black yeah. horse. And so and that makes sense as a bank because the, those yeah. Frisian horses are the most expensive. Oh, it's, it's, in cost the world. In, it's costing us money. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's co- costing us money. Cost money. And it's costing me money. It's costing but, um, me money now. Uh, but, but yeah, that is their whole thing. But they've gone down the whole path of like, you know, the kind of, which is a really big wave in British advertisement, which is like, we're going to get spoken word poetry. <laughs> we talked about this in the It's just like, through. you know, and it's like, Tears is like, Lloyd's, for the people that believe, yeah. for the people that see, the six AMers, the, the, the long, long weekenders, weekenders. <laughs> the all night benders, yes. Lloyd's, get your coffee. Get your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's something I said to Tom once. Well, I was like, <laughs> these poems are so fucking. Asinine. It's getting out of hand. Yeah, it's getting out. It's, of hand. But they're so fucking asinine. They can just end with anything. Like they have, they build up using a bunch of banal, like, oh, we're reflecting everyday life, and in all its, in all its lovely simplicity and and humbleness, and then we'll just end with some kind of slogan that doesn't fit. So it's like for the dreamers, the the creamers, <laughs> the ass <arse> reamers. <laughs> Come on, England, get, get your cock, cock out. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mc- McDonald's. Slam that face under my butt. <laughs> Just anything. Anything. Come on, England. McDonald's. Big Mac to fuck. Yeah. 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 Big yeah. Mac, small pack. <laughs> and it has to rhyme. It's very important. Uh, yes. Now we've told you, like, this would be more for the British listeners at least, but, like, now we've told you, like, you're not going to want to see Oh, it. God. It's everywhere. Um, it, it's a pandemic in the UK, It's honestly. a fucking no, pandemic of poetry. And it, and, it, and, it, and it took over hard. Like, mm. like, UK ads used to be some of the most quirkiest ads out there. They did. Mm. Like, uh, they, they were kind of up there with, like, like Japanese ads, like, bizarre. Right. You know, like, you remember the Tango advert? Oh, dude, yeah. Belly's gone again. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. Belly, belly, belly. Which, if, if you don't know, that is just, just a, look it up. a man running and a fucking prosthetic belly chasing a man. <laughs> That's it. These are like I, these are like cocaine slash weed was, was fuels. That, was that ta- was that Tango? I don't know, man. Well, I remember Tango did uh, the the classic one, which is like you've been tangoed. Yeah, come which, on, you like, know when you've been tangoed. And like one of them was that there was a guy in a basement lying down on the bed, and there was like a small drip coming from the ceiling, and it was like orange. So they were doing dripping. they were doing water torture basically. <laughs> And, uh, and, and he's it's amazing. All, and, he, and he's all excited, and then he hears like a knock at the door, and he goes, <gasps> and it cuts to the front door, and it's a mailman, and the mailman goes, "Hello, oh okay," and he gets out his package, and it's an orange with a stamp on it, and he pops it through the letterbox, and it goes through the letterbox and goes into a juicer, and it pumps out the juice, and it cuts to his apartment, <laughs> and the apartment is like five foot deep in orange juice. <laughs> And then that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. So that he's yeah. lying. Then he goes, Boof! and it like rains <laughs> down him. He goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know where you've been tangled. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. And then we went from that to just fucking shit spoken word poetry. Yeah, it's like that, poet yeah. laureate Bran Inson, oh, like David Belly wrote this fucking poem. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, and again, it's like it's fucking shit. Yeah, it's just <laughs> I don't care that they're a laureate. Uh, I I care that they've been given that title. It's crap. It's depressing. I'm sorry. It's always depressing. Well, there's never yeah. re- that like there's never anything hopeful. Well, there is, if it's hopeful, it's it's marred by a tinge of uh, melancholy. Melancholy. Yeah, because it's, Brit- like, well, it's British. Well, it's, you know, it's all a bit hard here. It's yeah. all a bit. It's all a bit rough here at the moment. Yeah, it's a bit yeah, cold yeah. and a bit everyone wet. wants to be a Ken Loach film in the yeah. fucking oh, north, gosh. but as an advert, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's either that or of course it's like a fucking classic song slowed down. You know, so like not a classic oh, song, yeah, but like yeah, yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah. like pop song slowed down. So you'll have like I don't know, fucking we got like rhythm of the night. Yeah, it's the rhythm of, of the night. night. Oh, oh my! Life. Um, um, and it will have people looking out of windows in some grey cityscape while the sun comes up. You yeah, know? and it'll be like, and it'll be that advertising is like cremation. <laughs> you know, it's just something completely <laughs> yeah. off. Have you got a fixed rate bond on your mortgage? <laughs> we do. We're here for you. <laughs> it's the rhythm 
come out of the night. Come to the morning light. Oh, man. All right, how many minutes are we in? We haven't talked about the creator. Yeah, classic. Oh, oh we're halfway classic. through our intended time. Yeah, which well. Is 30 minutes. Okay. Well, let's well get no, into we'll, it. yeah, we'll get into it. Okay, so uh, just to give a, uh, a very brief uh, overview of the film. So uh, it was written and directed by Gareth Edwards. It stars John David Washington, Gemma Chan, Alison Janney, and introducing uh, Madeleine Yun Voilers? Univoilers? Univoilers. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Mad- yeah. Madeline? Madeline. Madeline or Madeline? Univoilers. Yeah. I mean, look her up yeah. and check us on the pronunciation. Um, yeah, and we'll get into her performance. Oh, and of course, Ken Watanabe. Ken Watanabe, the G. Let them fight. Oh. Who yeah. Gareth Edwards has worked oh, with before. And Sean. Ralph Innocent. And Ralph, Ralph Innocent. Innocent! Oh, yeah! Boy. Oh, baby boy! Oh, baby boy! Oh, baby boy. Oh. What is it about Ralph? We, we love Ralph we Innocent. We fucking love yeah. him. It's, oh, the man's an institution we, we, for us. We've worked with Ralph. Yeah, we've worked with him. And he <laughs> um, was, I as him you know from previous podcasts, but like, yeah, he is just an absolute gem. He's a fucking G. <laughs> he's an absolute G. He's, and again, when he's, he's a speak- gentleman... He's classy. Yeah. He's a lovely person to be yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. He's just nothing bad ever said about him. I would love to work with him again. Mm-hmm. I would I would give much to get yeah. Ralph Innocent in. Which yeah. is weird because our most slated film, The Green Knight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 He's yeah, yeah. The Green but, Knight but, in it, but that's but he, not but his fault. That's not his fault because he's he great. amazing in it. in it. Yeah, he's great. Um, and just give a quick brief of the plot. Uh, so yes. set in the not too distant semi far future so we're not talking like hard future sort of not too distant it's still in this century yeah so yeah it's they're like, not tw- it's like 2060 70 yeah. which is very optimistic by the way yeah the time scale but yeah so the not too distant future there's a little bit of a clip at the beginning there's kind of like a little introduction that by the time we've sort of reached the 2070s we've got ai uh ai is an integral part of our day-to-day service uh and everything was fine until the fire nation attacked yes yeah, which in this case was that a massive fucking nuke blew up in LA. Uh, which, thank God, to be honest. Yeah, it was a super big nuke, and it blew up all the highways and all the disgusting, all the disgusting highways. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. No, but uh, a, a massive nuke uh, blows up, which causes America basically to go on a kind of global frenzy, genocide, which is, genocide, which is to absolutely eradicate. AI and it's mm-hmm. and it's basically established from the beginning where the US government says we are not the enemy of nations or people but we are the enemy of AI and if you are harboring AI we will come after you mm-hmm. basically so no matter who you are no matter what country you are if you're harboring AI we're basically going to come over there and fucking destroy you mm-hmm. and destroy AI yeah which starts this whole Jihad against fucking crusade yeah, that's against. That's a good way uh, of putting it. Yeah, against I AI. A, cru- a crusade for us in the West. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, basically, John David Washington. He is a sleeper agent. Yes. Who's kind of trying to? F- he's basically he's in a place called New Asia, which is almost like a free, a free state. Uh, yeah, kind of a coalition of coalition. Different- of different, it looks like it's uh, attached to different countries. Yeah, it's it's basically Southeast Asia. It's got like Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand. It's kind of yeah. it's most of the countries in Southeast Asia who have made it this kind of sort of coalition of states, and they are like the last freestanding nation that uh, protect AI, basically. Yeah. Um, John Davis William Washington, sorry, is a sleeper agent. He's in New Asia. Trying to find out the ringleader, yeah, the and, yeah, the prophet ringleader of this AI kind yeah, of resistance. Namata, Namata, cool, like, yeah. Namata was the, uh, that's like the monarchy. I don't know if they mention their name. They probably do. Yeah, uh, but Namata is a guy who invented AI, essentially, as it is seen in the film. Like he invented essentially sentience uh, for um, yeah. The four AI, which is then transpired into robotics, but so he's getting through them via dating the daughter of this Namata called Maya, yes. and yeah, the yeah should yeah yeah okay. uh, and basically what we need to know is that he gets in a little bit too deep that kind of bites him in the ass he goes native he goes native as they say yeah, they many times say, I'm like quite gonna, a few times he's gonna pull off the avatar script aren't yeah, you yeah. he's gonna pull off the avatar script you're gonna go full native on me yeah, yeah, yeah. Native. what does that mean what does 
What, what does that, that mean? Okay. Okay. okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Isn't that a term referring to Vietnam and soldiers falling in love over it in Vietnam? It Let me just check on this because meaning, native meaning. Yeah. Oh my god, first. Uh... Yeah. To adopt or affect the manners or way of life of a place or environment that is different to one's own. Yeah, absolutely. Did that like, come what from is the Vietnam War? That sounds like it came from the Vietnam War. It does, fair. doesn't it? Um, it emerges as a result of a meeting of European and indigenous cultures. No. Okay. okay. My mistake. Um, well, um, no, I imagine that was a big, uh, big thing in the Vietnam War because that was the first time. Oh, that. That was like one of the first, first time, time America, America, America was, like, was just ooh. like, this is shit. Mm. <laughs> you know, like uh, the news was in full flight and they had the protests back in America mm. against the uh, against the DA, the, the armoured police. Had like the protests yeah. in Washington and the whole like yeah, yeah. daisy chains and the guns and everything. Yeah, yeah. First and it was like it, America was like maybe we we don't feel maybe we're, we're the bad guys. Are we the bad guys? Yeah. We've got bones on our uniform. Yeah, these these people are actually really lovely and yeah. love and uh, God, very they're, nice. They're people. Yeah, they're people. Like us. Really it's yeah. weird. Um, but yeah. So anyway, um, so to put the better term, he goes native. Uh, it gets a little bit too bad. He ends up losing everything because uh, he he's he's married to her. Yeah, he's, he's married, married to her. Maya, and Maya has a baby on the way. Yep. And uh, so he's fully. I mean, he's gone full flight. Yeah. And basically, he kind of lets his guard down. Uh, the U.S. government kind of come in and like, we're going for it, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa what Which, the fuck? Yeah, we'll get into the the the, yeah. the gaping plot holes. Yeah, so we'll get spoiler alert. spectacular opening shots. Spoiler alert: we we, we, we have forward. very mixed feelings about the film. <laughs> yeah, well, I think yeah. we gave that away when we were when uh, right at the beginning of this podcast before we went the whole English advertising diatribe yeah, where yeah, it was yeah. like. Um, yeah, like uh, he's made not yet a great film. <laughs> I yeah, think we yeah, have yeah. we've given yeah, up the ghost yeah. a little bit there. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, um so yeah, and then uh eventually this kind of like blows up in his face, uh and then he basically becomes part of a task force yes. many years later to try and track down this martyr, this uh, Namata. The martyr, yeah. this uh this name that's popping up and you know, he was so close to getting to that person, and they're like, "You got to go back." And how they hook him in? Uh, this I, I'm going to say a little bit of spoilers now, but basically, his wife dies in the attack. Yes, yeah, so Maya dies in the attack. Sequence, the American. Uh, this is like the setup task force like, uh, attack, and the way that they get him back in is they say like, "We've got evidence that she survived the yeah. attack." And so that's the only reason he's going to go back. Yeah. Uh, and basically... That and, and the premise they have is that like, is, there is a weapon there is a that's super supposed weapon. to destroy yeah. Nomad. Yeah. And Nomad, which we see from the beginning, is a flying stratospheric orbital missile. Super nuclear, base. It's yeah. a super... It's, it's a Nicki Minaj. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you got my heart running away. Um, but yeah, it's it's a stratospheric kind of missile platform that yeah. can launch nukes anywhere, anywhere over the world, anywhere across the world. Yeah. But before it does that, it leaves down a huge scanner barcode thing <laughs> yeah. on the geography, which looks yeah. spectacular. Which looks amazing. But it's, it's again, when you think about it, for, that's a lot. Well, by the way, that's going to be the main thing of that. This film was like when you literally think about it for a second, it's really dumb. Yeah, we're, we're, we'll but get, it's we'll really cool later. later. But uh, yeah, looks fucking brilliant. Yeah, but that the opening scene. One of the like, stupidest things mm-hmm. we've ever thought of. It's just yeah. ridiculous. And, yeah, but um, beautiful. Yeah, like beautiful. And it's very much. I I absolutely believe it's like he had the image in his head, and he yeah. wanted to get that image no matter what. Like, yeah. so he, you know, and um, the script wasn't quite solid enough to justify getting to that imagery. Yeah. But we'll get into that, like you say. Yeah. So, yeah, so like you say, uh, Namata's, uh, Maya's still alive, um, and he still needs to get Namata and and get a hold of this super weapon that's supposed to be able to take down Nomad. Yeah. Which is the American Bill, uh, essentially stratospheric nuclear missile silo. Yeah. That can just, just go anywhere. Just, just think like Dr. Evil. Levels of yeah, fuckery. Yeah, yeah, that's I yeah. Mean, you're right. We're, talk, we're talking about James Bond. Uh, yeah, James Bond level super of fuckery. Uh, floating death base, all full of nukes. And, yeah, imagine uh, a Death Star, but on a budget. But hey, it looks cool. It does. It does. Look it cool. does. It's very cool. And that's a lot of this film. Yeah. It looks cool. Uh, so yeah, that's the premise. So I think I guess we'll do what we usually do, which is like Sean, your initial thoughts on the thing. Oh. <laughs> He's smiling. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. That's, that, is that sort of sums up? I was like, how do you think? Oh, 
Like, yeah, oh, I, I, I think the best way to summarize the feelings is just going, ah. it's like, mm. I wanted to like this so much. I really did. I wanted to like this so much. And there's parts that I like, mm-hmm. but it's a decent film that has too many failings to ignore. There's way too many issues, and it all comes down to the writing, sadly. Yeah. Um, there's way too many plot holes. The character development is not there enough. And it's funny, it starts out strong. The first third, I think, is a strong hitter because it makes it very empathisable from the protagonist's view, but from the American's view as well. You kind of understand mm-hmm. more, and then it starts to really fucking fall apart. Yeah. And it oversimplifies a very complicated subject. It's it's an okay film. It's, it's you know what it is? It's a quintessential, this was a Hollywood film made back in like between late 90s, yeah. like 1995 to 2005. It was like, yeah, yeah I was all right. Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed that. But, you know, it's it's not it's not great, but it's, like, I enjoyed it. You're not going to love this film, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, I'd say, to surmise, my, my feelings are like a solid attempt that falls flat, particularly by the third act. It's it's okay, but it's not it's not great. Yeah. It's, it's I can't even say it's good. It's all right. Yeah. It's not, it's not, yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. It's not a bad film. Uh, it's as my dad would say, it's a popcorn movie. My yeah. Dad would say. Oh, that's um, yeah. That's yeah, the perfect my, way of putting my, it. You're my, absolutely right. So, uh, me and my dad, one of our like fondest memories together is that we would uh, rent from Blockbuster. Every... Dude, this is such a Blockbuster film. Yeah, and from Friday night. For my, anyone my... who's under the age of twenty, twenty. Well, maybe a bit earlier. Under now, the age of twenty-five. 25. Blockbuster was once was it was. A... A... A shop. It was a goddamn institution. It was a, it was a shop you went and bought DVDs. We rented DVDs. Yeah, and from. DVDs are these discs. Well, even that. We, VHS as well, man. Like, VHS. Uh, I didn't come back from Antigua till. No, oh, well, like that's true. Yeah. So, so, yeah, DVDs. So, for uh, me, it was DVDs. You could also, you could also rent Xbox games Dude. and PS4 games, PS3 games. You Dude. could do it all. Uh, my brother used to work there and he used to get 10 free rentals a week. That's what too many. What do you do with that much time? I, I mean, that was the golden age for me, man. I, I played everything. I, I, I used to go after school. I used to go into... Back when video Blockbuster. games were also, like, a reasonable length. Yeah, yeah, Not, yeah. like, 120 hours. I, I used to go after school and, like, trade in this game. And, like, mm. man, thank you, mate. I was like, can I get another one? He was like, yeah, I've still got, like, four rentals to go. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, and me and Dad, like, every Friday, we used to go down to Blockbusters and rent out a film. And because Blockbusters has such a wide array of films, yeah. like, I mean, what's great about it, you get the Blockbusters, but you'd always get these weird B-list movies, these, like, yeah, party yeah. films. You get something like with Jason Statham, yeah. or, like, for earlier generations, Steven Seagal, yeah. or Bruce Willis. You, you'd even get some, like, films come over from, like, Europe. you get some, like, random yeah. kind of, like... I remember I saw Lebon, Lebanon, uh, Lebanon uh, which was a film entirely set in a tank during the Lebanon War. Against that's, Israel. That's a pretty and good concept. that... I first saw that coming out in Blockbusters. There you go. And me and my dad like saw it. And like that was the scope of what we that's, had. We had. I like, think that's yeah. where I saw Heat for the first yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Which we did a podcast on and that's been lost. And as my dad would say, this is a total Friday night popcorn film. Mm-hmm. It's just... It's, it's kind of high concept. Doesn't quite hit you in the moneymaker. It's just... It's got a lot of concepts going. It's got some fairly decent action. We'll probably forget about it in a few years. Oh, this film will not stand the test no, of time. No, exactly. Absolutely won't. Mm. Sorry, Gareth. We love you. We love you. Um, you know. But that's the thing. is like, you haven't quite got it there, mate, but you're getting there. Yeah. Like, he's, he, that's a director who's clearly growing, and it's really nice to see the career. Anyway, we'll, so I'm sure we'll get into that at the let's, end. But. Let's talk about the things that we liked about it, and... By doing that, let's kind of go over the plot as well, because the plot's very sure. basic. The plot, the plot the is plot very is so, basic. It's the girl it's who is the key basic. to everything yeah. kind of premise. Yeah. Um, which is spoiling it. Well, I suppose we've already, we've already spoiled it. Yeah. So the super weapon is a girl. Yeah. It is an AI little girl. Yeah. A, a synthetic little girl construction. Um, but she's the key to everything, and apparently she is a weapon capable of destroying Nomad itself. Yes. Um. Which, just one last time as a reminder, is this stratospheric orbital nuclear 
silo. And again, James I just, Bond Doomsday. Yeah, but... <laughs> a doom, it's a Doomsday <laughs> yeah. machine. Yeah. And I and and for anyone who's wondering why I'm, for anyone who cares why I'm keep bringing that up, is like it's so fucking dumb. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get into yeah. that when we talk about the things we don't like about the yeah. film, which will be quite long. Um, but yes, but so, yeah. uh, it's the girl who was the key to everything. Yeah, so what? she's uh, so she sort the key to everything. Uh, uh, Washington's character essentially, he's after the nuke attack. He's very anti AI, anti AI, understandably. And he and the like you said, the beginning of it is the beginning is really good. The beginning is a very like a very nice, fast paced, quick recap on history. Yeah, and we get to know Willie uh, Washington's character very quickly. I think they do it in like thirty seconds, which yeah. is really succinct. And like one of the first things that we learn is like after the sting operation happens, is that he works in the junkyard. Uh, mm-hmm. He works in this little junkyard, and in the in the LA nuclear, nuclear ground zero. LA remains, yeah, ground zero of where the AI um, unleashed the nuclear missile. Nuclear missile. And uh, there's like an AI that's crawling through the rubble, and it's like, where's my where's my wife? Where is she? Yeah, where is she? And then he just like crushes him. Yeah, he like, like rips out rips out his, like, his CPU basically. Yeah. And uh, the girl who he's with, who's like kind of like really distraught, is like, it sounds like a human. And he has a line where he goes, "It's only programming." Yeah, yeah, just programming. Don't worry about it. So that's what that's where he is mm-hmm. at that point. Uh, yeah, he doesn't but, believe they're sentient. sentient he doesn't believe no. they're alive. They're but not, um, they're not before safe. we before before we go into it, do you want to you want to talk about the opening of a crater? Because that is that is like if we're talking about the what things that we like, sting? if we talk about the things that we the like about the film, great. It, it's fucking brilliant, yeah. right? It's really Absolutely. good. That first shot. So the Incredible. first shot you see is this beautiful dawn light. That that dark where everything's kind of. That's why I quite like dusk and dawn as time of day. Is like it's when the light isn't strong enough, but it's there. So the the outlines of everything gets a bit looser. Yeah. And everything's in this dusky blue, and it yeah. gets a little bit ethereal. But you see this beach, and then you see this giant laser. This kind of like. Well, as I said, like it's almost it's like a barcode, barcode scanner, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. blue. But this thing just appears on the water suddenly. Mm-hmm. It's like measuring out as this kind of like uh, a line with ridges in it. Like imagine a kind of what would I say? Imagine some kind of um, sight almost yeah. on a scope or something, mm-hmm. but not the dot, but the line one that does distance and yeah. diameter. And it appears on the water, and then these people just come up from the water, like yeah. really slowly, just these heads appear from underneath the surf. It's all silent, isn't it? And it's music. all silent. Yeah, it's just, it's it's just pure atmosphere. And that's when I knew, I was like, this is what he had in his mind for years. Like, this is the image he wanted. Like he, Gareth has those and moments, it, And he? it's beautiful. There's so many good moments in he this. Has like, like, in terms like, of visual spectacle, by the yeah. way, in terms of like visual filmmaking... Uh, this guy can do no wrong. Like he's really fucking good. If he's seen, really fucking good. If you've seen any of Gareth's previous work, like Godzilla, everyone remembers the the jump, the, the base, the jump. base jump. Yeah, and spectacular. Like, it's and that's that's the kind of level, like that that moment where they're in the beach and that beautiful kind of like blue navy kind of dawn, and it's it's set in probably like Cambodia or Thailand, so it's got like these sort of like very like. Mono- Big, mon- monolithic, monolithic and kind jagged, of rocks sticking yeah, out of the water, water. Yeah. and then this just azura blue kind of yeah thing just appears over the water and they turn up and it's like whoa this is insane and like yeah. you said he, this is the shot we were immediately about. hooked hooked yeah for that it was like this is and which then, is I think that's why we feel so strong because we were like oh this is gonna yeah. be good and then they started fighting and then they started talking they started and then talking. we were like yeah. oh no oh dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, me uh, we'll get into what we don't like about it in a second but just that's one of the first things that captures is like okay. that Gareth is Gareth is obviously very a very visual person yeah um, I mean do you want to do the good part Separately, or do you want to kind of just blend it into one and go for the whole plot? No, I think go to the good part. So, yeah, what you said to me before is, uh, well, you asked me, is like, um, what did I think of it overall? Or as I really asked you, what do you think of it overall before we move on? Yeah, and then go into maybe break down the good bits, like as a brief summary. Yeah, um, like, what did you what did you like about it? Uh, in terms of my overall feelings, yeah, what's your overall? Um, feeling? is that. It's a very ambitious piece of work in terms of this is someone who's clearly got a lot of lore and a lot of visuals that are built up. Um, 
but it is ultimately kind of hung out to dry by its writing. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, my, my initial feelings is that the good and the bad were just too far in between. Yeah. And I was having mm-hmm. too much of a bad time before a good time came along. Mm. So there's so much more it, succinct it, with your it, words it, than it, I am. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't as if like, you know, there's a little bit of badness and then the goodness comes along. No, that we have like prolonged bad periods and then tiny bit of good. You're like, whoa, Jesus. And mm. then it's like another long period. It's of like bad. a bunch of, it's like, it's like the occasional eight. Uh, the occasional like seven to eight with yeah. too many four to fives. Yeah. In there, there, there are parts of this film that genuinely blow me away, yeah. and there are prolonged periods of this film that put me to sleep. Yeah, uh, and which not, and not only which li- we'll get into this, but I literally did fill asleep in this Fuck film. You know. And um, he missed one of the most crucial plot yeah, points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's it's very um, it's very admirable for someone to kind of pull off this thing. Yeah, but, but also. Uh, I'm. I'm just. I. If I have to sum up from one works, I'm just. I'm totally mixed in the whole thing. Mm. I'm just very divided, and to be honest, the good parts are great, and they kind of balance out the very long, boring bits. Right. So it's weird. So like my memory of it initially is like this is a very. It's a bit of a slog. It's a bit of a long slog, but then there's like little sparks of inspiration. Mm-hmm. But actually, looking back at it, it's like it's not really that. It's more like you're rewar- you're rewarded after a very long period of yeah. dullness by a little bit of an action piece. Th- this it's film like, is a mm. bunch of side quests with the occasional um, mm-hmm. main storyline in the game being interesting. Yeah. Exactly that, mm. um, and yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll sort of get into it what we didn't like about it, but like the writing is a huge big thing. Yeah, that we'll get into the plot. The plot holes are maddening. Maddening. There's just too many to ignore. It's just too many. There's, there's a point of being nitpicking. There's it's a point like, of being. There's like a point Prometheus. of not being able to give it over, and then there's a point of like this is bad. It's like Prometheus. Yeah, Prometheus. Is a good comparison. Uh, that was the thing where I, I was just like, this is just absolutely. I, I cannot get over it. I can't get over yeah, it. Yeah, like, you, know, you know the bit where she has it. she has a fucking C section, and get and aborts a fucking alien parasite, and was like, you alright? Who do? Yeah. What? Right. <laughs> You're not even going to talk what? about. You're not even going to talk about the ship rolling towards her, and she doesn't just run left. Run, right. run left. Yeah. Run left. I'm sorry, but that's God. that's that's the one. Uh, right? Yeah, it, it's it's like that. It it. I do kind of like compare this to Prometheus because like Prometheus has a very beautiful art style, really good visuals, very good cinematography. It's a good comparison. Completely hung out by its just very very shaky writing, very weak writing. Yeah. Sadly, um, I mean, one of the best terms I heard about. Writing is like writing is the architectural pillar of your entire project. It's like if the writing's bad, so it doesn't matter how pretty you make the house, how nice the walls are, how yeah. beautiful the decor is. If the beams are rotten, the whole thing falls apart. It doesn't yeah, matter exactly. And yeah. I, I think that's that's the shame about writing. You can have great acting, you can have great directing, you can have great art style, but if the writing's bad, yeah, no one's gonna be able to get past that. It is. Uh... One of my favourite guilty pleasures, as Sean knows, is The Village by M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> and uh, that yeah. film that film is beautifully shot. The soundtrack is incredible. Soundtrack is spectacular. That's it's why vo- I'm sitting evocative. here. That's why I'm here sitting on this porch is one of my favourite you know, music pieces it's, in the it's film. A, it's evocative. It's, it's so... It, it grasps you in that kind of like folklore aspect. Mm-hmm. But god damn... Does the rhyming just drag it to the pits? Yes, yeah, like, and that's why it's a guilty pleasure because it's like, I love I love eighty percent of this film, but unfortunately that twenty percent is the most crucial twenty. Like that's what actually makes the entire film. Yeah. That that remaining twenty percent is like the fucking foundation. I suppose because the entire film it's and storytelling. Yeah, it's a storytelling. Exactly. If and that doesn't work, then look, we're obsessed works. as a species with storytelling. It's kind of our thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we didn't invent logic. Oh, like a mother bear, if, like she doesn't have enough food, will eat her cubs. For example, logic is not a human invention. Neither's love, neither's emotion. But like storytelling is like it's not the only thing. But storytelling is like a huge identifier of what we're about. Oh yeah, and yeah, we know. We know when a story falls when flat. When a story falls yeah. flat, we really fucking know it. It's in our DNA, man. Yeah. Exactly. Like we're very big on that shit. Um, so, going back to what we 
sort of love about the film. Uh, we've talked about the beginning um, without sort of like going from like beat to beat of like the entire plot. One of the big things I think me and you agree what stood out the most was the art direction. Oh my God, the art direction is spectacular. Yeah. I loved the art direction. Is... I, I loved the world aesthetic so much. I wanted to spend, it's a bit like the game like Deus Ex, particularly Human Revolution and Mankind Divided, the cyber renaissance aesthetic. Yeah. But like, it was just one of those where I was like, I love this art direction. I really like what it's about. It's so consistent. Like, it feels very thought out. Like, it feels yeah. very deep. It feels it's, very real. It's, it's truly inspired. Like, yeah. it really is. Oh my God, yeah. The design of the AI uh, differentiates between uh, full AI that have sort of uh, taken on likeness of people yeah you which is very like donate kind of, your image yeah yeah and you get a human face stuck on a weird it, half cut off neck yeah it's kind of like insinuated that you can donate your likeness and that's why there are lots of ai walking around with human faces basically yeah. um which is a nice little sort of well building aspect that there are some ai that like to be robots and there are some AI that like to be kind of human, yeah. which is kind of nice. Never, never explored enough. Yeah, because that never. bothered that bothered me. Which again, never. Like, that's that's an incredibly because like, well, an amazing look, topic to talk yeah, about. Because like, oh, we're we're just as human as you, but you want to look like a toaster. I'm yeah. sorry. There's I feel there's <laughs> I feel we really haven't it's explored like, this enough. Like, why uh, do some literally have Oculus Rifts for heads? Yeah. And some have full fucking human faces. It's like I wanna, I wanna look like a human. Well, what do you want? I want an old wrinkly man. Yeah, <laughs> why are I want you an old? Old wrinkly man. Why did you choose that? Although face? actually, yeah. again, as I was saying to you, was like actually, I think it's that like the skin, whatever they do, ages because Ken Watanabe at the beginning, his character, uh, his AI character with a human face, like he is young, he looks younger, and then when we come to him later on, like was it? it Five years later, Five years later he, yeah. his hair has gone yeah. white. He looks a bit older. Okay. So I think the insinuation is the skin age is not. It's the like air. Terminator. Yeah. That logic of like I'm a biometric, uh, what is it? Uh, like a bio organic uh, construction of mechanism, but it's like um, the skin itself does age. Yeah, it's an organic component yeah. layered on a artificial body, which so, is also one of the reasons why the child in this is so important because yeah. this is a first child AI. Which is also growing and developing, and that's things like how does it grow and develop? Just don't think about it. Yeah, just don't, don't think, think about, about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. No, we're talking about the good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. No, you're right. <laughs> we you're can't right. help it. Right. We can't help it. Can't help it. We're trying there's to do too the good many stuff. And well, the second we talk about something we like, there's always a still a question there's a whole, in the wait, background. Is there a thing? There's like, a fucking. Oh, yeah, we hang love, on, though. We love the others. I'm just fucking make any sense. <laughs> nah, but okay. Uh, going back to the so art, design. Said, art design is uh, spectacular. It, it, it's one of my yeah, favorite looking sci-fi's maybe I've ever seen. Yeah, and I'll I'll, I'll say that quite gladly. I like, think so as well. I, I love I've, I've not been I've not been this impressed since District Thirteen in terms of art design and characters, which is design. very interesting because that's another indie director who got yeah. big thanks to Peter Jackson. But yeah. like, it feels very in that vein. I, I agree. Yeah, I've I, but but this is more actually. This is way more. Oh, this, this is. is this is tenfold. This like, again, is again the uh, AI heads and stuff look real, man. They look like real. The Oculus Rift faces. They look like real life. So, looking at some behind the scenes footage, I've seen one of the things that they've done is they've really tried to minimalize CG. Thank so, God. what they have done is they've got actors mm-hmm. in full body suits wearing full kind of like arm yeah. covering costume with like metal hands. Yeah. So yeah, so we're not talking about like fucking green suits or like mocap suits. No, we're talking we, about we, we their entire were... like they're actually wearing yeah. the AI we, the, the rope they're wearing robotic suits. Yeah, we've essentially, essentially. got Properly trained actors, yeah. the heads are uh, walking with green screen heads. Yeah, that's because... it. But the movement and it looks great, and it and it pays off so yeah. well. And that's something. It's such a big payoff. I it works obsessed. so goddamn well. Something I got obsessed with, but like how much I could empathise with these Oculus Rift faces. I know, like because it's some like, of these you people don't... look like fucking fan hats with a bit of a lob- yeah. lobster face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was like one like, that yeah. had this kind of like rectangular visor for most of its head and then it had basically two mandibles as its jaw a lower flap and then this kind of um bar like a like a like a fairground rhyme kind bar of, that comes down but it would did be, the eyebrows so that was his eyebrows yeah, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. i could read so much expression from yeah. that i was very impressed because i was like you know what it reminded me of? it reminded me of puppeteering 
Yes. In that way, where it's like, yes. how much emotion can you get out of Kermit the Frog when he doesn't even have fucking eyebrows? Um, or like Mrs. Piggy, uh, to name the famous ones, but like, again, with puppeteering, where it's like, there's a lot puppets can't do, actually quite a lot. Yeah. So it's amazing puppeteers, again, like the Henson Company, you know, the Muppets are the famous one, but like how much they can make these characters who don't emote. even have real eyes yeah. fucking emote Mate. and you can read yeah. it. It really yeah. reminded me of that. And I thought that was incredibly impressive. I actually got quite obsessed about one of the um, one of the AI. AIs in particular. Yes. Yeah. I just thought it was so good. There's the scene where it expresses like abject disgust and it's and it's not big. You know, they're not having to go big in some ways like you would have to do sometimes with a puppet at least. Not always, but sometimes with a puppet. But like, it was just the noise, the way the body moved and the way the flap moved. I was like, he's disgusted. I can yeah, completely yeah, yeah. read that. So that whole thing of like, you need two human eyes, you need two human eyebrows, you need a mouth, like... You know, to yeah. read someone, not necessarily a mouth. I yeah. thought they did. They did. They pulled it very minimally, didn't I they? I think this was such a masterclass in that, and I think that might be the film. One of the film's greatest victories yeah. is like they could make you empathise with something that did not look really like a person. And you know what? In London, the biggest advertisement because we we were because uh, as you know, Waterloo is a big ground zero for advertisement. So when the Jurassic World came out, famously, uh, they had raptors at Waterloo and they had like raptor bots and people in like raptor costumes. Uh, they did the same for the creator. So apparently when he went to Waterloo... They did were, they? Yeah, so the, there was AI. I mean, I didn't need and, to go anywhere, but and, I should uh, just go to Waterloo. I've, and they, uh, I'm and they had prosthetics. I would have loved to have seen that. Which actually had the hole in the head. Okay, so maybe the advertising budget went there then. Uh, yeah, they were... Uh, That's amazing. To describe the AI, essentially, it's human, but where their ears are, you have a big cylindrical hole. That yeah, goes and it through, goes right through right the skull. And you a, can, it's a pure hole. You can see the kind of uh, CPU kind of ticking away. Which, again, is hole. another plot thing where we're like, you just wouldn't design something like that because yeah, that, it's way that, too that's, disturbing. That's also, that's like that's like Death Star level of exposure. Yeah. It's like, oh, my CPU is exposed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, come on. Like, if I just took a, like, a really dirty cotton swab and shoved it in like there, I thought I could really fuck filthy, things up. Filthy magnet. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, a a fil- yeah, just magnet. throw a fucking magnet in there. <laughs> yeah. throw a f- oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, no. But, um, again. Yeah, but like, that was the thing, the human AI in particular, the human-faced ones, I was like, there's just no way we would design a synthetic to look like this where yeah. half its neck is missing and there's a hole in the middle of its head it's, yeah. very, it's too disturbing that's so, silly it looks really cool yeah but there's no way we would it's and, silly and so for the advertisement they actually managed to kind of pull that off they still apparently, I think they still have ears but the cylindrical tubes are kind of by their lower neck Sort of like behind the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, so sort of they had to like build on something to that. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. And it, but again, going back to the AI, uh, one of the things that we noticed straight away was the movement. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, you you leant over to me with like the movement is so fluid. I was like, I think because that they're, they're real, and I looked into it. Says, yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. it's just actors. It's just people. It's just because I thought it was it's mo-cap. just trained. It's just makeup. No, it's just it's just actors it's, in suits. Yeah, it's only the head. Is it's CG. only the head is CG. I really thought it which, was mocap, uh, which, which I was very impressed just, by. Which is again, got to give it to Gareth. Got to give it to yeah. the production company. That is a big old ballsy move, and it paid off massively. It did. It is. It is such a such a leap forward mm-hmm. in terms of immersion and believability to have actual people yeah. um and, and like was. you said the fact that you empathize with this character this uh the significant guy yes sort of uh sort of kind of got the fact that you empathize with him so much is like a testament to the fact that we're beautifully blending the realms of like CG and actors yeah. which not, which know, is a great example of like the filmmakers like you're blending you're doing exactly what the theme of your story is where it's like you're blending practical human effects well uh, yeah and that yeah. thing of like With... what is it to be sentient or mm-hmm. human it's like it's funny how much you can empathize or love or care about a thing that doesn't that that is like you but is not yeah you know and I think that's one of the big things I mean yeah, it's it's so much as like, oh no, you you care about the Oculus Rift faces. You do people like they yeah. don't have to look exactly like you for you to care about them. Yeah. I mean, case in point, dogs and cats and, and yeah, mo- yeah, yeah, and animals. Let's yeah. face it. Okay. But like, yeah, it's it's not that hard to empathise. Yeah, there was even a little 
a little bit, which is also biggest uh, one of the sort of things we don't like. But there's a bit with uh, one of the sort of side characters and their partner, the oh, uh, God, yeah. the woman who orders ice cream. That's also really terrible, but also it's like, yeah, it's just nice. It's just nice to see a human character, like a human android. Um, but yeah, uh, the other thing I really loved about it was the performances. Yes. From uh, John oh Washington God. and... Uh, Holy shit. Well, everyone, all the top cast, actually. I mean... Yeah. We, we, no, we, absolutely. I mean, uh, John David Washington... Uh, Jimmy Chan does an okay job. I mean, I, I feel a bit she sorry for have, her. She has been. She doesn't have a lot to work with. She hasn't got a lot to work with, and she's kind of been shoehorned in this kind of like sci fi role. She's done a lot of sci fi, but she does it. She does. She does pretty. De- she does a pretty decent job. Yeah. She, again, she doesn't. She doesn't have a lot to work with at all. She's very brief. She's very brief. But she does do very. I mean, in that first in her scenes, she in does that opening very well, scene actually. when she overhears him, so he picks up a radio and he's like, "Call off the attack." This is Colonel fucking John David Washington. <laughs> what are you? Saying, what are you talking about in don't there? Don't do it. Which is also <laughs> stupid. Again, this comes. Yeah, thing, yeah. I know we're not supposed like, to do an here, open like, radio call. Yeah, what the fuck? Uh, John, is there uh, not a subtler way uh, to John, contact? Uh, what, what are you talking about there? Oh, yeah. nothing. Nothing. Nothing, <laughs> sweetie. Oh, nothing, sweetie. Go back to bed, sweetie. It's like, dude, it would have been more apt to text them at this point. Um. But like her uh, face, that beginning bit, like when yeah, she's like, "Oh my heart!" Yeah, yeah the heartbreak. Yeah, she does do a good it's job, incredible. but then she disappears for most of the film. Yeah, so which is a shame. She doesn't get a lot to work. But yeah, John David Washington does uh, an amazing job, which is weird because we both absolute... didn't. We both didn't think too highly of him. In like, no. Yeah, we didn't think he was terrible, but it was like he's just fine. He but gets the job he done. But is he was outstanding. In outstanding. This. And, um, and as was uh, Madeline. Madeline Univoyles, the the girl. Uh, the little girl. They um, were. They were both. Alf. Outstanding. Alison? Yeah, they were out. I mean, absolutely outstanding. And Alison, uh, uh, Jenny, 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 yeah, Jenny, Jenny, who plays the who plays Colonel, the Colonel. She was great. Wow, she's so good. That bit where she's talking about her son's be her son being yeah, like, like both her sons shocked, got shocked. killed by the yeah. AI. Yeah, and one got like fucked over because it made him fall. Well, it didn't make him, but like he fell in love with it, and then yeah. And then it screwed him over and, and tied him on. Which, again, that's where I thought the Vietnam kind of references well, do you know, were in Do you there. know what she reminded me of? She reminded me of that character from uh, Avatar, the, the big buff colonel guy. What was the actor who plays that? Yeah. Um, yeah. Was it called? I have no oh, idea. Oh, God, we'll have to find out. Co- co- colonel, the most interesting character. Yeah. Avatar. Along with um, Zoe Salandana's character. Yeah. Natiri. Um... But yeah, Stephen Lang. Yeah, because he he's me. fucking great yeah. in that. In the sequel, like, I haven't seen Avatar two. By the way, I've just watched the YouTube clips since. Yeah, you don't, with, you don't have I've to only, watch, but I've only watched watch Avatar two. <laughs> no, but I'm just going to tell you, I've only watched his clips. He's great. He's fucking great yeah. in it with his son Spider. Uh, yeah, he's really compelling. Yeah. And Alison Jenny is like a similar one, but way more. Uh, it's a way more subtler performance yeah. in terms of like her rage and her anger is very sort of kept under protocol. Because it's practical. Yeah. Whereas Stephen Lang is more like, I'm just, I'm pissed I off. I just hate blue people. I hate blue people, but I'm going to let everyone know that because I'm a big red yeah. man. And she's like, no, like no, she has this line where like, the uh, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals once coexisted. Then the Homo sapiens raped and murdered, murdered the all the Neanderthals existed. until... They were done. Like, what do yeah. you think is going to happen with AI? And it's like this is a valid argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this is at least a talking point. And you even know, when, even there's more was... complexity. But it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a good point to bring up. It is. It is. It really is. It particularly, is. and again, and she's both being logical, but underneath it, it's like this is actually stimulated. But this actually comes well, from what happened it. to your son. Like, she has I that really lovely balance of like she has to be a leader, but she's also carrying this. In- incredible burden mm-hmm. and that's why her, I think her performance for me comes off way better than I really, well, more compelling I, than oh, I re- yeah no I agree because I really liked her I was she like, is really this is how struggling. you do badass colonel who is the enemy yeah it's like really, really good really struggling like, with the I like shades Lang as well but that's but, th- but with Lang it's pure charisma it's just pure it's, it's pure, pure charisma ah, yeah. like <laughs> yeah. his character is about a uh, three dimensional a sonic back in 1992 yeah which is a video game reference well, for anyone but, who's younger than 20. God, this is depressing. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog a, was once a video that's game. That's the second time you've questioned your age. Into the, yeah, <laughs> it's true. I'm obviously, I'm obviously building a complex. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, no, it's just one of those moments where I was like, oh god, I have to actually, I actually have to talk about it. I'm yeah, only thirty one, but it's like, oh, I but actually yeah. have to state the fact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but so in, uh, um, I agree. It's like the thing where it's like. His is just sheer charisma as an actor that he's made or yeah. compelling. But Hers is, doing is very... both charisma, but she has a good character, which yeah. they then absolutely fucking burn. Yes. Absolutely wasted. We've done it again, Sean. We've, we've talked about something good. No, and we've gone no. straight back into the bad. Not we, I. No, done it again. We're, we're all doing it. Yeah, yeah. like we, that's we, the problem with creative. this film. That's the thing about that's the creator. Like, there's things we yeah. like, and then there's literally something just behind it where we remember. You're like, oh yeah, it was really fucking uh, shit. Yeah, it was really shit or dumb. Um, um, but sorry, there's some there's some absolutely incredible scenes with John David Washington. And, oh my uh, god, Ledley. that guy um, fucking kills it. This, I mean, range. he he knew the brief. Yeah, uh, there are scenes considering he doesn't have a. A huge amount to work with. He's like, no. I love my wife. I love my wife. Yeah, that's his whole thing. The, there's a there's a scene again. The, a again, spoiler alerts. But like when he's face to face with like his wife in a coma, and yeah. he basically has. And it turns to, out she's Namata. She yes. is now. Like spoiler alert. She is. Namata. We did spoiler alert. We did a like, long time ago. Yeah. What, how long is it now? Gemma, like Gemma Chan's character ends up. Maya yeah. ends up becoming. She inherits it. From she inherits her dad, it from a dad, and she built the AI. The child. AI, which is based off her, her and John and David John Washington's, Washington's, Washington's baby. Baby. It's like so. The AI child that he gets saddled with is his daughter. Daughter, because her daughter, his actual biological daughter, died in that initial attack. Was it like a stillbirth or something? Well, no, but because she, they show the shot of like the baby in. I think it was miscarriage because she was in the water when the when the bomb fell. So did it die from the attack or was yeah. it a stillbirth? No, from it's, the from the, it's from the thing the attack. Oh, good. Because what I was worried about was like, oh, the baby died because the mum was sad. Mm. I no, no, no. I, I, I think it's, I think it's uh, the mi- miscarriage from the missile okay. dropping in the in the sea and fucking up shit. Um, but there's a bit where he finally comes face to face with his with his wife, and he's with Madalena, who's in and she's AI, in a coma, at this and point. she's in a coma, and his wife, and he's with. Uh, sorry, we'll do character names. Alfie, who's the AI girl. Yeah, uh, he's with Alfie. Who's basically his daughter, a shat, like a mm-hmm. a recreation of a daughter. Which again, <laughs> sorry, it's just that question of like, if they died in the attack, how do you build a personality from a baby? Say it again, Sean. Yeah, I'm doing it, it again. again. <laughs> don't think about it. <laughs> just, don't, don't, don't think, think about, about it. it. I'm sorry, but like, what is this? Like, yeah. How is it your daughter still at yeah, this yeah, point? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no opportunity for even. To, uh, anyway, yeah. sorry. Um, but there's a moment where he has to sort of flip flip the switch. And kill her. Yeah. Uh, because she's in a coma. Because again, it, she's being looked after by AI monks. sentient monks, monks. By the way, Buddhist AI monks, which yeah. makes a lot of sense actually. Yeah. It's quite nice. Um, um but they're like, we were literally like we can't we can't we can't harm people. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's, it's not a part of thing. our mantra. Yeah. We can't we can't hurt people. But um there is there is some uh, like when that happens, it's 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 heart wrenching acting oh, from dude, both of them. From both it. of them, he dude, he's working. He's working with very little. He's and working he, with like nothing, and he, and he, and he still fucking mate. I was yeah. getting very teary watching that. The same. And Alfie then starts crying. I was crying. very impressed. And Alfie, yeah, and she's, like, she's like nine years old, and she and she and uh, mate, and that's it. I was like, fair play. These these two actors are really. Yeah. Really fucking pulling their weight and really going yeah. for it, and it really acting. Yeah, they're really elevating what they and they to really work do, with. and and that's basically the continuing the sort of continuous or theme of it is where like John and uh, Madeleine kind of they really carry the film. Yeah, as the two protagonists, they, like, really, they really do. Oh god, they really do. And I mean, it takes, Ken, it takes Ken, time. Ken's happy. We, we love Ken. We like Ken then. Watanabe. I mean, he's happy there. He's a good actor. I've seen his work in other things. Like, yeah, he's, like we, last, we love him. Last love Samurai him. is yeah. the one everyone's going to yeah. know him for as the last Ronin Lord. But like, you know, he does great stuff. Not in this, but John. Um, John he has nothing to work with. John Madeleine and Alison uh, Jenner basically they really carry the film emotionally. Yeah, John and, David Washington and Madeleine Una Voyles are. Yeah, yeah, just they are the emotional. Linchpin that really do carry the whole film, and they really, really do try their best. Really we'll, we'll get into why that's not enough. <laughs> yeah, later. 
Well, writing, uh, basically. Yeah. But yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, final thing we'll talk about, again, is we've talked about the art design, but we'll talk about the, like, the law. Uh, for me, there were some, especially with, near the end, there were some amazing shots uh, in the monastery. But basically, there's a big old... It's a very, very, very simple plot. Mm. You know. Oh, it's super simple. It doesn't. John Washington finds complex. the girl. He kind of falls in love with the girl because it's his daughter, and then it's well, like, not falls in love. No, he, not falls in he love. Grows he grows to love. to love her. Sorry, I just let's, so let's those, clarify that. It's that one of those films. It's, let's let's get that clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, not a Hollywood gro- film. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a Weinstein film. It's not yeah, a Weinstein. Oh, oh, the Weinstein wasn't a paedophile. He was a rapist. You know? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. No. That's better. One is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that terrible that there ha- that there's even a fucking scale for that? Uh, fucking hell! Um, fucking hell! Okay, just the, <laughs> just the sorry, got a bit dark there. I just thought it was just fair to define that, but it's like, isn't that te- yeah? It's fucking yeah. terrible that even that has a it fucking is, scale. Oh God, what a fucking it, it, it sordid is. world what we a, sometimes live in. It's Hollywood, baby. It's, yeah, it's Hollywood, baby. Yeah. It's Hollywood. Fucking um, hell. Basically, uh, yeah, he he finds this AI. He grows to love her because he realizes the daughter. Well, um, no, he doesn't know most. Of it. He doesn't know. He just grows to love it. her because yeah. she is a person. person. And yeah. uh, and then and then the revelation. Then the revelation. Comes. Although I will say, ugh, I'm doing it again. Well, the whole the, the, the bad with the, the humans, yeah the, the bad. Humans, well, yeah. no, just the no, no. But it's just the thing of like, what's the tipping point? When does he really come to the realization? that he feels AI really are the same as people. Oh, because Sean, they had a disjointed edited sequence. But that's what I mean. It doesn't happen. Where where he went to the toilet and just goes behind him. But it doesn't actually happen. (laughs) It's not... (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, But anyway, their path leads them to basically uh, John totally switching sides and totally being with the AI, wanting to protect Madeleine and totally going for the whole thing. We've got to destroy Nomad. We've got to destroy Nomad. Yeah. Um, the Doctor Evil uh, orbital stratospheric Bond thing, nuclear yeah. missile silo. Uh, and but there's a lovely. Just don't forget. There's a there's a lovely sequence where they're in this kind of like uh, sort of like mountainous village. Yeah. Uh, where Absolutely. where you fully get to see the sort of like Buddhist side of the AI, where they yes. sort of embrace Buddhism, which is a really again a, a very very interesting topic to go into mm-hmm. like AI. Which actually makes a lot of sense because you know it makes a huge amount. Buddhism of sense. doesn't have a god. It doesn't have yep. a creator. It's all about karma. It's all about. Yeah. It's just all about. Would have been uh, nice for them to actually go into it. Yeah. So the AI have kind of turned to Buddhism. They've kind of turned to mantra, and there's just these amazing shots of yes, of Alfie mingling with human children. It's the first time we've seen look, it with getting, other kids getting looked after yeah. by AI. There's a there's a very very quick shot. Of an old AI. Is this the going up the hill? Walking up the hill. God, that made my heart and, and the AI is like an old woman and she can't quite do it. And there's this young sort of like Cambodian this boy. This young boy helping her up. Helping her up. And, so it, and it literally made me beautiful. tear up. And it's yeah, just so... And it was this lovely kind of symbiotic relationship between humans and AI. Yeah. Where it was... Nothing had changed. It's just humanity in different forms. Yeah. And it was just so beautiful. Yeah. And wonderful. But it's so quick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, talking about the things that we like about it, that that's like that, <laughs> like Gareth, like when you nailed on those little bits, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was just in- think, it was lovely. I think clearly he is a visual storyteller, and he's good yeah. at that. Yeah. Just don't get him to write char- uh, Don't get him to write well, uh, we'll, plot we'll, or dialogue. We'll get into it in terms of studio, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I think I don't know. I think the film reeks a little bit of studio interference. I disagree. I, I I think I think it's I think it's more than we think. I think it looks like it's not, but I think there's a I think there's quite a bit of. Really? We'll, we'll get into we'll that get into kind it. of budget. We'll get into it. We'll, 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 we'll get into okay. It. Yeah, we'll get into yeah, that because yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I I yeah I don't agree on that one, but okay. we'll, we'll get into it. It's um, quite interesting. Sean, any of the things that you liked about the film? Sound design, which you sound didn't design. like. Uh, the guns, I liked the I sound design. I didn't quite like the sound design for the guns. Uh, 
you really liked it, and I can understand why. I'm, I think I'm a bit of a fanboy after watching Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, but dude, I, I, that's... I, I want a heavy bass. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a and I get that as well, but also bass. that's like the yeah. best of the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, no, I... I, after thinking I about that. it, I, I get it. Like, no, it is, it is good sound design. And for the most that part, that quiet is. dread of, like, yeah. again, when Nomad's laser comes down, you get that, just, you get that very gentle. Mm. Yeah. And it's terrifying. <laughs> you said to me, it was like, I'm so glad we, uh, we introduced the weird sound effects to Nomad <laughs> because otherwise it would have been really kind of, yeah, like yeah, weird, yeah. But like, now we've got the, come on. Yeah, now we've got now we've Mom. designed a, now we've gone to a studio and designed a whole sound set to terrify the world with. And now it's spooky. <laughs> now it's spooky. Now it's spooky. But yeah, the little bits like that. Um, soundtrack was fine. Did it's the all job. Right. Yeah. All right. Again, cinematography was great. Oh yeah, brilliant. Cinematography, all of it was good. Yeah. I actually can't think of a single shot where I was like, this is crap. Like, nah, it was all amazing. Good. Yeah, really, really well good. filmed. So, really credit good. to Gareth and his cinematographer. Really, uh, really good work. Credit color to scheming. the art, color scheme. Color scheming and DP, obviously, but like, art looks design. great. Um, no, we've already said art yeah, design. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. That, art design's a given. Yeah. Yeah, looks great. Um, music was meh. Yeah. Music was very meh. It ain't. Yeah, it's, it does the job. Yeah, I think they could have elevated the film by one point more if they put more Don't know the music good soundtrack. But yeah. that was Hans Zimmer as well. No. Yeah. Well, he's fucking asleep at the keyboard. That isn't was he? his. That like, I have to double check, but the, I remember the credits. I was like, really? No, it's not Hans. Zimmer. Is that Hans Zimmer? No, it's not Hans Zimmer. You know what it is? It's an apprentice of Hans Zimmer. That he's overseeing and going like, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yes, yeah. obviously we'll say Hans Zimmer, but... Yeah. It does, yeah. It is Hans Zimmer. But, like, that's not Hans Zimmer. Yeah, that's he's Hans Zimmer. Is, uh, you know how, like, uh, when, like, Michelangelo and Da Vinci painted... When they, they, they basically gave yeah. the apprentices, like, can you just paint, like, 50% of it or, like, 60% yeah, of it? Yeah, like, yeah. And I'll, I'll do the faces. Yeah. I'll do the really Or I'll do shit. the touch-up, like they do yeah. with a lot of uh, animation studios, yeah. for example. I'll so, come in and I'll do it. So, yeah. That's, or, um, or, like, famously, like, yeah. That's Hans Zimmer's bitch. That, yeah, <laughs> doing that, this. This is yeah. clearly not Hans Zimmer. Like, mm. on full power. This is, this is someone yeah. else who Hans Zimmer might be overseeing. Yeah. And they did the job. It's not bad. It's not great, though. So we've got two directors of photography. We've got Greg Craig Fraser, Fraser and Orin Soffer. Fraser. So two two DOPs. Probably there's one for the bulk of the oh, countryside. Uh, yeah. And then there's one for the cityscapes. Uh, actually, we see this when we go through the... Probably because they when we go through the data When we go through the database, we have a lot of, like, split departments. So we have, like... Uh, we have like a Thailand unit and then a yeah. Euro- America unit, yeah. basically, or, or UK that. unit. Yeah, three editors doesn't feel like it. Uh, it well, you know what it is. It should always be one editor. I it think. should always be one editor and lots of assistants. Again, so yeah, consistent. Yeah, uh, because the editing is not. Great. Yeah, we'll get um, into the editing. It's, I'm it's not, bad. I'm no, not I, great I, 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 I on that stuff. No, no, you, and, yeah. you and your wife uh, know that way better than I do. But even I notice it is. It is bad. I was like, it is editing. noticeably bad. Some of the editing is yeah. really it's poor. Very cheap and basic cheap. and dull. It's cheap. Yeah. It's very. It's it's yeah. it's cheap. A lot of the editing reminded me of fucking. <laughs> this is a horrible exaggeration, but like Twenty One Jump Street. I was like, this is like a fucking eighties TV show. Yeah, this it, is poor, <clears throat> man. Or, or this is the eighties, nineties, early two thousand. But like, this is a TV show's work level of editing yeah. at this point. This is poor. Which is a shame because some of the shots they have to work with are absolutely gorgeous, but the connection in between are terrible. Yeah. Uh, big up James Klein, uh, production designer. No idea. Oh, production designer, incredible. Uh, who also worked on? You looked it up before. Oh, he worked on many of the Star Wars stuff. Fucking, there you go. Yeah, he worked it's the on... the nicest thing I could say Yeah, he worked, he worked on Avatar. Yep, uh, he there worked on Star Trek Star and Trek. Solo and the sort of newer... Uh, yeah, so newer fair. Star Wars that's the nicest thing I can say about the new Star Wars. We've got a lot of art directors. We've got a, a Thailand art director. And we've, we've got two, actually. We've got three. Which is good. That's They're amazing, yeah. People. So we've got three. They're not doing a Disney yeah. Mulan where it's like, let's get a writer who's not from China yeah. to, uh, or no, what was it? A head of costume who's not from China to look at costume museums. Mm. It's like, maybe we hire a maybe Chinese hire one. someone yeah. from China. <laughs> yeah. maybe. Same with the writers. Maybe, maybe. maybe at least get a consultant. Mm-hmm. Maybe. 
I'm sorry, but maybe just check in with that shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and set to create the goal. Again, like, very good talent on display. Like, very good talent. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the art direction, the production design, mm-hmm. um, DOP, acting. Yeah. All really good. So it's such a goddamn shame that one of that the just two, took a fucking script! That one of the two most important aspects of a film, which is the script and the editing, yeah. are dog shit. I think dog shit's a strong word. Shit. Shit's fine. All right. Because is the, the script is not dog shit. Well. No. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, no, you're right. It's it's not dog shit. It's, it's not. It's, te- it's, because dog uh, shit is like... It's, like, it's, it's, it's frustrating. frustrating. It's terrible. It's, it's frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay, very, very, but with like you very said, frustrating like, elements. There's just it. too many plot holes to get yeah, past. It's, it's not yeah. dog shit. But no, it's, it's not. not. Good. No, it's not. You're right. It's it's just it's frustrating. But it's, it's there. It's, it's there. So that's close. why. That's why it's frustrating. Mm-hmm. It, it's all there. Everything's there. Uh, just oof, God. Remember the body and send the wife of Chris. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, um, yeah. Incredibly, and that's. Like, I think. It's like, what would you say about the creator? What's the one word you'd say? Oh, like frustrating. 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 It is frustrating. Which is a nice a term than just like, I hate it, but it's like, because I don't. But it's like, why are you frustrated? Because it's so close. Yeah. It's, Not close, but it's like, it's the edu- elements of greatness are there. It's edging us. <laughs> yeah. To greatness. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, you got to subscribe for 10 quid to oh, cut, yeah. reach completion. All right. Well, let's get into what we hate about it. So, I mean, the plot I mean, holes. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the fucking the abject lack uh, of consideration for the implications. Like, I hated the Nomad the most. That was probably my big one. Yeah, we'll uh, um, yeah, we'll fly through this because <laughs> there's a lot. There's, <laughs> there's a lot. There's so hate. much to question. We'll, I mean, we'll try and fly through it in, in fairly cons- in consistent time. But yeah, we'll try and be concise. Good lord. <laughs> good, yeah, lord. good lord. There's there just is... so many things where it's like, don't think about it. Yeah, it's, it's like, about sorry, it. but there's too much time now to think about it. Yeah. And this is a film that's asking deep questions, therefore you want me to think about it. Yeah. Um, this isn't just sheer entertainment, which is what I quite like about a lot of sci-fi things. is like, you know, it's both entertainment, but also like, let's ask some big questions. Let's yeah. think about you know, yeah. Lord of the Rings is not there asking you the big questions. It's never challenging you on no. that. And that's its purpose. It's just there to sh- tell you a very good story about, you know, different yeah. races and cultures coming together and rising up against a terrible evil. And it really, there's more to it than that. But like, well, me and you love, uh, me and you love her by Spike Jones. We love her. Uh, that's wonderful. We should do that one. Which is point. essentially a romance film. Yeah, framed in a sci-fi setting that asks some very big questions. Yeah, like some very big questions about like mortality and love and and like the creator is not so on the fucking nose. It's just doing it via a yeah. macroscopic lens of like let's look at a relationship. Yeah, let's look at one simple little relationship. Yeah, um, between these people. So let's let's talk about the script. Let's. <laughs> Let's, yeah, because we've um, already talked about it too much without avoiding it. The script, for me, borderlines in the territory of student filmmaking script, where mm. it's kind of like there are some grandiose ideas, and then you have some absolute, oh, just some bomb lines coming out. Oh my god, some yeah. Terrible, terrible uh, lines that come out of it. I mean... My favourite, just off the top of my head, my favourite line that's really bad is uh, there's a really kind of like intense action sequence where someone, one of the human sort of spec ops guys dies and then she looks at his body and goes, God, see you in Valhalla. (laughs) 
Fuck <laughs> off! <laughs> what? Fuck oh, off! Oh man! Oh, is that a oh. human? Is that is that is that a human saying? Yeah. Is that one of those human sayings but it's that also I'm not like quite re- familiar with? You know, America, the aggressors. Therefore, they're into the whole battle, fucking religion, where it's like dying yeah. glory. It's all about fighting. Yeah, there's uh, no complexity here. You know, so first of all, there are some uh, there's some very cheesy lines in it. Yeah, it's really full of cheese, ones. but it's it for for us. It's the loopholes, like the, like. We're up for a bit of cheese if it's earned. We are. We're up for a bit of yeah. cheese. We're up for a bit of like humanity kind of cheesy lines if it's earned. Sure. And there are moments in this film where it is quite sweet and there are some lines yeah. where it does work. Um, will I go to heaven? Will I go, will I go to heaven? No. no. You have to be a good person to go to heaven. So we're both not going to go to heaven so. because you're not a good person and I'm not human. Uh. Please, no, I really appreciate you telling, explaining that. Yeah, yeah, that. please tell me the morality Because the audience of the story. are idiots and they can't yeah. figure that please shit Please tell me the overarching morality of this entire film, oh my please. God. Please do that. Oh my God. Um, it's it's both. It's the writing and the editing, but in terms of like the writing, we'll, we'll focus on that for now because there are yeah. so many plot holes in this film that it, it gets to the point where you cannot ignore it. Yeah. You just can't. You can't. It's it's too it's yeah. too massive. For a film that's asking you to think. And then it's like being like oh. Yeah. yeah. Introduce you all this shit. Of course we're gonna notice. The biggest plot hole that me and Sean encountered was that basically, uh, so after, you know, it's it's a few it's many years after the nuke of LA. Mm-hmm. And America apparently apparently is just some goddamn world police, which I guess is a I guess is a social commentary on oh, America's role in the terror. world. Oh, isn't that weird? Oh, but uh, yeah. but these but it's got to the point where they can literally invade uh, international airspace and mm-hmm. international territories with no repercussions, mm-hmm. uh, and basically they send in a. Uh, sort of like a spec ops team yeah. into New Asia, and that includes uh, John Washington in mm-hmm. it as well. Uh, he's part of the crew, but they basically did they just fly a fucking ship. They just and fly land a it ship uh, and so drop it down, and the police turn up and it's like, ah, oh, fuck them. Yeah. So but one of the things is that, this is uh, a declaration of war. One of the things, first, so they they come to New Asia, and like we're kind of told that like New Asia is kind of like. Like we said before, like a coalition of nations, it's a slightly kind of anistic kind of state where, like, it's almost almost like city states, like collection of like sure. nations. Basically, they show up. They, to be they, fair, they, do we know that, or we just we, we are we're, we're, ma- we're extrapolating because we have to because we do that all the time. Yeah, but we're, but but also because the film doesn't really give us anything to hold yeah. on to we or we have to do that but the the first thing that they show is the map of new asia mm-hmm. uh they go okay so we're going we're going to drop into new asia so you better get ready and then they play radiohead <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> i mean i mean man i'm can we just say now i'm a i'm a fucking big radiohead fan i bum them but they play everything in its right place mm-hmm. as they're dropping in and i'm like this was and I was like oh this is this is nice but even as a Radiohead fan I'm like this is really doesn't really belong because that that song the most hard hitting part of it which is why all the remix only focus on this part of the song is that do 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 boom 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 and then it cuts to Tom York going, everything in its right place. I'm like, this is just not really appropriate. For yes, like yeah. Top. Like, I'm all up for the do do do. Don't forget, do, they're invading do, a country do. as part of a spec ops, uh, like a tactically yeah. dark mission, you know. It's, um, they're doing it in stealth. Yeah. And we just had Tom York be, everything is right. Because again, it's like, no, no, you must recognise the audience. Like, this is what you think right now. It's well, like, know, uh, they're, they're doing the right thing. Yeah, so one of the biggest things that we encountered was when they're invading New Asia is that they bring up a map and it shows, like, the surrounding geography. Yeah. And, it, and what we can what we can gather from the geography is it's basically, mm-hmm. it's, it's Cambodia, Myanmar, uh, maybe Thailand, uh, maybe Laos, 
uh, in sort of this big sort of like Southeast Asian cluster. Um, and above it is the big old grey space of China. Yeah, it's and we're just like, China. Where the fuck are these guys? Yeah, <laughs> yeah where so, the fuck? So back when I said it at the beginning, but it was like, where the fuck is China? You can't just have America invade something on your fucking neighboring, doorstep. Neighboring countries. And you don't do anything. Or like, there is no, there is at least no reference. There is no understanding. It's like, again, it's like, oh, we would just drop into this because they're harboring AI. But it's like, I'm sorry, but... It feels no. like the geopolitics of this has not been listened to at all. And it could have been, we were talking about this earlier, but like, this could have been done with just a line of like, uh, once Nomad destroyed uh, the nu- all the nuclear submarines. All the nuclear submarines. Yeah. Like, there was no leverage. Anything. Anything. Like that. Anything, Anything. Because all this film shows where it's like, because you brought up a fair point of like, well, we're selling it to China. So we don't want to make them look incompetent or asleep yeah. at the wheel. Yeah. We don't want to insult them either, which is absolutely fair and understandable. But it's also just like, yeah, but you need some kind of reference because otherwise they just look like they're fucking not, they well, they're not doing yeah. anything. Like, uh, the analogy I use is like, okay, so, I don't know, America, uh, like, Russia comes and bombs Ireland and England does absolutely nothing. nothing. Yeah. And it doesn't enter the fray in any yeah. way whatsoever. I'm sorry, but if something happens there, we've had two world wars about this. Yeah. So it's like, you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't ignore what's going on on your fucking doorstep. Yeah. It's a huge fucking it problem. such a this, problem. Th- and throughout this film, because uh, Nomad is just so fucking... Yeah. And this is like the biggest. This is like the biggest thing. It was like Nomad is just the super weapon to end all super weapons. So Nomad is a a satellite based nuclear basin that can travel around the world at insane speeds because it's orbiting the Earth and it can drop nuclear bombs anywhere over yeah. the world. That does not rule out the many missile silos. Yeah. The many intercontinental into and the untraceable nuclear, nuclear submarines. Or the untraceable nuclear submarines that apparently are yeah. all all over the world. Which again is um, like okay, so maybe in the future they found a way to trace them. It's but like, they but then say explain it. it. Then explain it. Like I'm sorry, I'm not asking for bad exposition where someone literally explains it. I'm asking for a line, a one line. Again, if there was a one line of being like it's been quiet on the eastern frontier since the since the submarine purge of 08. You know what I mean? Yeah, not 08, but like 38. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Literally, yeah. that would be enough. And yeah. that's and don't get me wrong, this is not writing masterclass. We're not we're not conning you no. out of money. This isn't masterclass, but like this it's isn't some bad. Yeah, there's better ways to at least... Because that's all Tom and me, like, not all, but, like, there was a huge plot hole we just couldn't get around. Yeah. Where we were just and like, I'm sorry, but, like, it feels like America's just able to run the world at this yeah, point. Yeah, literally. It's so like, I need it's some either, kind of context of how they're able to do that. That's all I'm asking for is some context. Yeah. I, I will believe it if you give me the reason, if you present me enough of a foundation to believe it on, even if it's a throwaway line, I can buy that. But yeah. at this point, I'm like, I'm sorry, I have no justification or understanding why Russia or China, China. Or why isn't the Middle East the more East concerned? India, where is Saudi Arabia yeah. or Where's India, India? Yeah, in this they? fray? Like, they'd be very fucking concerned. They're going into like, oh, we're going to New East Asia, which is like, what, well, basically Cambodia, the region at that point. Yeah. Cambodia? Yeah, Cambodia, yeah. Laos, so, so, kind of that yeah. region. Yeah. But that region at that point, it's like, <coughs> I'm not going to ignore that. Do you imagine? No. Could you imagine if I don't know? Um, let's say Russia invaded a country, several countries away from us, but in our hemisphere of the world. Well, you said like and we invaded were, Ireland. Yeah, invaded yeah. Ireland. But and even like, even oh. modern politics can exemplify mm-hmm. what's going on with Ukraine. We're not going to get political, but it's like what's getting on with Ukraine. It's like well, we didn't fucking ignore that, did we? Like, yeah. Things happen still. Yeah, it's like because that's if, how geopolitics works. If Russia decided they were going to annex Tunisia in yeah. North Africa, it's like they're not a NATO state, but we'd like what we'd the, still what the be fuck? very good fucking. Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 just if you want to do that, I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm saying just you have, have to, you line. have to go. You have to give some kind of explanation of to yeah. that. I mean, I, so, so yeah, I, I would no say that is dumb. Like my my line would have been. Uh, you know, they're going into New Asia. One of the commandos on the ship goes, have we got any chatter from China? Yeah. Any chatter from China? No, they're all dark. 
It was like, are we okay to do it? It's like they've been passive since yeah, the, exactly. since since the purge of two thousand thirty seven. Yeah, and that's all you need. That's it. Done. Yeah. Well, we not enough, we don't need details. We just need to know that's that enough. Shit, shit has gone down yeah. where there's been a conflict, and we know that they're not going to get involved. Yeah. It's. I I appreciate the fact the director wants to hone in on the story, but like this is just too. Yeah, but this is the story. But if if again we're if we're gonna kind of like believe the world and we're gonna believe the yeah. hard the hard fineness of it. We like, live in this world. Live in we this know world. How the world works. Um, great sci fi's stand up on their ability to give kind of semi answers. Yeah. Intriguing answers. You know, at least really like strong sci-fi. implications for you to make the, yeah, the bridge yeah, yeah. and then imagine the rest. You don't yeah. you don't have to explain to me whatever happened. I just need some kind of idea. An, an inkling yeah. of what might have happened. Because again, nuclear yeah. submarines, like again, no yeah. nomad yeah, yeah, yeah. is this very obvious stratospheric orbital ordnance weapon. You know? Yeah. Like you can see it. Yeah. I don't understand how this is more efficient than a nuclear submarine that is untraceable. Yeah, li- right, right. I mean, it's intimidating. So it's it's intimidating as fuck. And again, but, it's, I think it comes back to that thing of like he wanted that image. But I don't. Yeah, I get it. But but you're right. If we're going to go into actual like pure intimidation, particularly like, with sci-fi. For, I'm sorry, but sci-fi you have like, to explain. You have to be realistic to like, a degree. For instance, like nuclear submarines at the moment, one of their biggest missions. Is to literally pop up in enemy seas mm-hmm. undetected. Yeah, they can just it's kind of like anywhere. kind of like, way, <laughs> you know, way. It's you know, like it's, a, a it's Russian... literally like, are you ready? Are you, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> so like, yeah. yeah, so, so like, like a Russian sub will turn up off the, off the coast of Glas- off the coast of Scotland, and we're like, what the fuck? Yeah. And like, meanwhile, like, like that, and then we appear in the fucking yeah. Adriatic Sea, and we're like, you're right, yeah, and like, whoa, shit. Like yeah. this is all the tech is already there. Like yeah. the in, this tech insane. in a sci-fi is more backwards than current tech now yeah. in terms of how it works. It's very At least for James Bond, isn't it? It's very James Bond yeah. again. Like a fucking Death Star laser, essentially floating in the stratosphere. But like on the other hand, you have oh god, what was I going to say? Um, what was it? So on the other hand, you shit. I think I lost my point. Carry on. Well, I was going to say, uh, in terms of like, let's stick up for the director for a little bit, in terms of why Nomad mm-hmm. could be the most super weapon in the world, I was saying to you, I was like, so maybe, again, this is not explained in the plot. This is just yeah, me. Yeah, this is... This is me extrapolating. Which, again, it tells why, you about bad writing ways when we yeah. have to essentially do writing ourselves to make it make so sense. So, the reason I was like, well, I think Nomad could actually be a big threat because, because it's in the stratosphere it could essentially intercept nukes because when nuclear missiles have to hit the target, they have to go right up to the stratosphere, yeah. go across, and then they uh, they basically, you know, like a like a rocket going to the Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, has to detach, you. and then the warheads all fly out. Now, if you've got a weapon in the stratosphere that can intercept warheads, then yes, you do have a fucking super weapon. Sure, but... That can both can... intercept and lay down fire and can I just offer the counter to that is that Nomad literally can't be across the entire atmosphere right. so like because it's orbital yeah because <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, orbital yeah, yeah and it's a singular which yeah. is another big thing is like Nomad's size and its scope makes no sense it changes size all the time yeah, throughout the film it does and apparently it can be all over the planet and it's almost like do you I know it doesn't I know he doesn't but it's like is Garth, Gareth Edwards a fucking flat earther because well, he seems to think that the earth is not a globe it's, it's like he seems to think that being over being over like like the Mojave Desert desert compared then, to like fucking Vietnam no, is the same is, thing is, is it has like, to move if, 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 it's a, a globe seconds, in a few seconds yeah. like, you can't like, target several things at once when you're at that yeah. position particularly like, if you're using a barcode scanner well, that's it like the, the barcode kind of comes down. It's like, oh, we're in Jordan. We're in like the sort of like uh, Arabic desert. And yeah. All of a sudden, now we're in. Yeah. It's so like you can't. Like, this takes. You can't. This takes hours. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Particularly at the end, where it was like, it shows the targeting system going down, and we've seen it in real life, where it's like, I don't know, maybe a kilometre wide at best. Yeah. Actually, probably much less than that. From the opening scene, that thing is. 
maybe the size of like 500 meters. Well, it seems to be able and to then, differentiate between and, that and... But then there's a shot, so that's a fair point, maybe yeah. it is that, but then there's a shot of it, like, and its barcode scanner laser is going over a continent. Yeah. So it's like, like, how... 500 kilometers how worth How big of, is yeah. this thing? Or how... Sp- yeah. I don't understand. There's also... I've literally completely... Which, again, is like a great example of an original sci-fi. Or original anything is like, you're breaking your own rules, you're being inconsistent. Therefore, yeah. I don't know what the rules are. It's very noticeable. And it's annoying. Because people notice that. We're not stupid. There's also a scene where they look up and you can literally see Nomad in the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And There's nomad, several scenes. And Nomad... That. Is bigger than the moon in that scene. It's like yeah. it encompasses like maybe sort of sixty percent of the sky. And I'm like, do you know how big something has to be to encompass that much mass? That much yeah, mass. yeah. And then there's like, another scene where like, it's like, oh, we it, flew up a ship. Any, that's the anything, size of a car. If anything, if you look up and see Nomad, it should be in your vision maybe the size of a car, sort of darting around Earth. Sure, or maybe like a maybe maybe like maybe your hands width. Well, in diameter. I mean, we've seen planes. Planes are enormous. Yeah, right. They're big. They're not the biggest thing ever, but it's like planes are big, and when we see them, they're specks. Yeah. Meanwhile, and Nomad is literally filling up the fucking and frame. If you, how if, big is even, this thing? Even today, if you look up in the night sky, you can see the Skylink by Elon Musk. Sure, you can see it. And what can you see? You see dots. Yeah. Because that's in orbit. Mm-hmm. And you see dots. We're talking... And he's he's basically saying, uh, no, no, this is basically like a Death Star level thing that's going across the Earth, where it encompasses like the, almost like your entire vision of looking up in the sky. Which also it's leads like, on to other questions of like, do you understand how much you're fucking on gravity at that yeah, point? Yeah, but yeah, if you did do, that... Do you know what that uh, mass the, does? The, water, the moon fucks yeah. with the sea. Yeah. Do we, you think you can just shove we, something up there? We would have like fucking tsunamis all over the planet if you got that it kind of fucking mass atmospheric around. catastrophic disaster. Um, and then there's scenes where like it's just above the cloud level, yeah. and then it's in the stratosphere. Well, particularly it's by so the end of the film, it just it goes from that to that. It goes from just when the Washington's cloud level. on missiles, and you see the scale of it. It's like it's not that big. Yeah, but like, so what's I, going I on? Get it. I don't get. Ugh. Ooh, didn't it's think all, it through. It's all just very inconsistent. On because if it was some kind of like it, the ultimate thing is like if you wanted Nomad to be the way you want it to be in this film, it should have been a ring. That encompassed Earth. Yeah, you know, like a halo thing. Like That's a big, what I mean, like, yeah. Spin, spin Just sliver. give yeah. me a big ring that encompasses Earth and can launch missiles mm-hmm. at any point. That... Which also is ridiculous. Is terrifying. Yeah, and it's also ridiculous still. Maybe that's the problem. It's like, there's no way you can build that. Because they talk about in the film where it's like, it took us 10 years to build Manoma. I was like, one, I don't believe that took 10 years. 10 years? 10 years? That's a fucking 70 year project at least. Yeah, that's a century at least. Yeah. And again, it's like, two, what the other countries didn't do anything about this? Yes. China didn't step in. If. Russia didn't step in. Let's turn it around this way. If, if Russia. Because that's the talk of the town right now. But if Russia was building a weapon that could launch missiles anywhere in the world and it was huge enough to block out the stratosphere, you couldn't, one, hide that, and two, do you think no one would have done anything about yeah, that? exactly. Are you fucking serious? Do you exactly. think America or China, but particularly America would have been like, or Europe would have been like, yeah, we'll just wait and see. Yeah. You know, they're not going to let them build that shit. Yeah. No one gets to build that, and you can't build that something that scale underground. Yeah. It's impossible. And you can't build something that's in the stratosphere that's that big on Earth. It's going to be built in the stratosphere. There is no option. Do you know what I mean? Because again, it's like, how did you get materials up? Oh, oh, we built it on Earth. Okay, how'd you get it up there? Yeah. So you built it in space, didn't you? You built it in space. That is the only way, which is still ridiculous. But this is just within the realms of like plausibility. Oh, oh, oh just fucking. <laughs> oh, 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 I don't like it. I don't oh, like it. I don't no like man, it. it's such a. It's, it's a stupid fucking. It's concept. such a stupid fucking concept. The imagery is fucking it's great. Beautiful. And that's it's amazing, problem. and it's just pure. It's pure it's art. Pure, it's pure art and it's, imagery. It's yeah. pure aesthetic yep. over. Uh, it's pure aesthetic over logic. It's pure aesthetic over consistency. Yeah. Not consistency necessarily, but like storytelling, logic, uh, believability. They yeah. absolutely demand. They don't ask. They demand that you just don't think about Nomad in any way whatsoever. No. 
Speaking of uh, not thinking about it, there's a little bit at the end where they're back on Earth and, uh, spoiler alert, uh, the weapon, Alfie, is not dead yet. And he breaks out of maximum security military grade. Well, they both do, don't they? They do. Yeah! That was a horrible scene cut. What was the point of that? And uh, there's a bit where, like, he fakes killing Alfie. In an ambulance. And then he's like, "Uh, we're going to bury her in ground zero. And Ralph Innocent has to kind of, like, justify that. He's like, usually "Usually we destroy them. But we're going to bury... Her in Ground yeah. Zero. I was like, Doesn't why? explain why, why, though. Why? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, all, we have to, all we have to say is, like, it's a, it's a symbolic gesture. Yeah, That's sure. all you have to say. That's all you have to say. Which they, would be... They don't, which actually they don't would, say that. Which actually would work, because it's like, that doesn't make sense logically. It's like, no, it's not about logic. It's actually about symbolism mm-hmm. for it's humans. Like, yeah. Like what they are. It's quite but, important. But they, but they don't say that. They no, say, we're going to bury it in Ground Zero. Yeah. So, anyway, so he... Uh, yeah, John, they crashed the John, ambulance. Yeah, so John, John Washington is there... Uh, what David John Washington. Sorry. David John Washington. What's his character called? I want to call him his Joshua? character. Is it Joshua? I think it is Joshua. Joshua. Is it Joshua? Yeah. So Joshua and Alfie. Because we've got to get the religious imagery in there. Yeah. So Joshua and Alfie are like riding in the ambulance, and then he like he's like, oh, actually, I didn't kill her. I just stunned her. Take over the ambulance. Because you think they wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. And in this high medical lab. And then the we get a sequence where. Fucking Joshua and Alfie essentially hijack a commercial flight to the moon with zero resistance. I'm well, I'm talking zero resistance. The, here. the thing I will say about that is because Alfie can shut down a control she other can. electronics, she stops anything. She can. Though, okay, yeah. we haven't talked about this, but She's... Alfie's basically tech Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she can. Tech Jesus she can shut term. down. Um, so she can turn off or power up anything. That's fine. Although we haven't been told that she can stop any uh, we also, control anything. We also don't get nearly enough scenes of her doing that. So when they break no. out the ambulance, they basically just run for a bit. And they run into a terminal. And it's like, oh, one ticket to the moon, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. One ticket to the moon. It's like, you're a fucking tech Jesus. Just just. Also, your you're public enemy number one. They yeah. would know immediately. And then they, they take a fucking flight up to the moon. And I'm like, I mean, you were like, no missile defense systems. Yeah. No, well, no, they no try jets. And she shuts them down. But does she? She does. She does. Okay. No, no. But it's so even stupider than that because when they're in this commercial ambulance traveling to the oh no, I'm, I'm talking about the flight. Going no, up, I'm saying the plane. just before that. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so yeah. they're traveling on this commercial ambulance to get away uh, to go to the burial site, and then they hijack the ambulance, and he just climbs out of it with her and climbs up a drain pipe to get away because they crash in a like fucking highway tunnel, like an, like an underpass. Overpass, yeah. right? and it's just yeah, like, right. no, I'm sorry, like, we have drones now. There'll be drones everywhere. Also, that they'd that, be watching. Also, you. that crash as well. It's like. He's dead. Yeah, <laughs> that's like a, that's like oh a, yeah, that's like an eighty mile Dude, per hour crash. That's how <laughs> yeah. annoying the plot yeah. points are. Is like we're not even talking about the logical things at this point. No, we're like, just I'm not the, even going to go. The real let's stuff. not even go into the car crash. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt as far as like he survived the crash for sure. whatever reason. You know what I mean? I have to ignore that to get into the bigger problems. Yeah, but it's just like again, it was just like oh, they escaped a sir, and it's like. You don't have drones. You have drones. You have. I've seen Boston Dynamic robotic dogs. I've seen. I mean, drones are great now. You don't. In the future, when AI is a thing, you don't have drones with guns on them. Yeah. Following the car at all times, because don't forget, Alfie is the most dangerous thing in the world to America right now. Because it's the only thing that can destroy their massive stratospheric orbiting nuclear silo. James Bond doomsday weapons. Are you yeah. kidding me? Like, but no, none of that. And they just get out of the ambulance and they climb up a drain pipe above them to come out at the top. Yep. And again, there's no one there waiting for them. No, nothing, nothing. And then they go to a space. I would have 12 F-16s. By this point, it would be like F-18s. But it's like, this is the most important thing ever. Oh, you would have you just fly a jet over and bombed the shit out of at them. At least. At this point, like... At least, at dude. <laughs> at least. At <laughs> least. If not, just start a bit smaller and be like, yeah. well, maybe let's have some drones with machine guns shoot at them you got it. You got it. You got like a backup team? Yeah. <laughs> like Nothing. One, like one backup team? And yeah, like team? you say, so after that, after yeah, that after bullshit, that, they walk on foot. On they foot. They escape on foot somehow to get to a fucking... 
But don't worry, people. She's got a hoodie on, and he's also got a hoodie on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you don't know who they are. Yeah. Because even though they would, even though they would have absolutely have face detection. I mean, if the algorithm can detect what you like in terms of advert preferences, now they're absolutely bio tracking. Yeah. So let's let's forget the fact that they don't read their faces. They have got hoodies on. They have got hoodies on. And he also has a prosthetic on. artificial arm and leg. Don't get yeah, which would be don't which, forget which, which would have been traceable. Tra- would have been traceable. Absolutely. Easy. Trackable. Look, even if it's just like oh, we can't trace the specific model. It's like I don't care. Just scan a guy who has a metallic arm and leg, and we'll go from there yeah we'll break it down it's fine with the american government we again have a stratospheric orbital nuclear silo yeah like we probably have the resources to scan for people that fit this exact brief and maybe there's yeah. 50 100 2000 of them yeah. 200 000. doesn't matter the scale you'd shut them all down shut them down to check you yeah. would you would Shut it down. down. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. Yeah. So, so but you would. Theo von Gerogen. But you would have Gerogen. though. You would have just would have. absolutely shut that shit down overnight. Like and again, I know, I know that anti AI, but you have a technology. No, no, but, no. But that's the thing. It's not about AI. It's about tracking at this yeah. point. This isn't AI. This is just good practice for security. And, and, that, yeah. and again, let's just. Ign- and that's the minor problem. Yeah. Let's just ignore that. Let's ignore that. Then, let's go into the big problem, like you said. The fucking getting in a moon well, ship. Well, yeah, first getting of Getting in a fucking flight to the moon, and it wasn't like the American government were like, shut everything down right now. No like, scramble out. the jets. What do you think happened at 9 Scramble the jets. Yeah. What do you think happened at 9 11 for America? Do you think they just let air flights carry on that day? Yeah, they yeah, shut yeah. that shit down. They shut it down immediately. And they also intercepted one of the planes. Yeah. Like the one they're going for the uh, for the Pentagon. Sorry, I'm, I'm worried now because it's. But I want to check. But like, no, they, they did, didn't they? They did. They, they, they cancelled everything. And also, um, the girl comes in. And there's a robot at the desk, and uh, it's like, what is your, what is your? Purpose? Yeah, they cancelled all flights yeah. worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. Temporarily. Sorry, guys, I just, I just wanted to make sure I got that right because I know this is a very distressing topic. Yeah, so I just it's quite to be respectful yeah. and accurate. Yeah, yeah, they did. They shut yeah. it all fucking down. You're telling me they won't do that for this? But sorry, mm-hmm. there's a robot at the desk. There's a robot at the desk, and he goes like, "What is the purpose of your flight?" So all robots can be free. Good luck. And like what? What? <laughs> well, to be fair, that no, uh, I can actually buy because she's obviously has some power. That's fine. Place. That's fine. Which again, that, but no. But the thing is, it's fine. But also, it undermines the message because like, so she's mind controlling AI, like they're slaves. Oh yeah. But also, to suit, but, like to suit her purposes, therefore, really damaging the message. My, like, uh, so 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 it's slavery. You're my slavery. my my what my what. Was yeah. more about what? mine. Was more about the fucking che- first. What the cheesiness of the line? Oh, it's like, terrible. What do you want? Freedom for everyone. Was like, oh, for fuck. Oh, come fuck on. Off. Get a better line. Because this film is Get not exactly subtle. Line. We already got that. Get a better line than that. For the love, I got like. You could have. I mean, even being something like off the top of my head, and this isn't good, but off the top of my head, it would be like for the world, for 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 it to be better. Yeah. Yeah. For the world to be, be a better, better place. It's not good. But that's still subtler yeah. than what they said. Yeah, or just like which is what, really what's, bad. What's, that the that reason, is what's the reason for your visit? Just a little bit of a uh, little bit of freedom, a little bit of vacation. For sure, a little, time away from it all. Yeah. It's like okay, I got yeah, well, I get that. What's the reason for your visit? For things to be better than they are. Yeah, you know, no, and, this and this isn't good. Don't get us wrong; like we're not deluded. Well, no, we're not. These, no, this is not good writing yeah, either. This is better, than, but it's still better. This is better than. I want freedom for all robots. Because to be the, honest, uh, God. And again, it's like, are you inferring that there are no humans? Because with America, that hates AI. By the way, no, it wasn't a robot. Because America doesn't do AI. No, it's a, it's a, so it's, it's, a, a it's a droid. No, it's a droid. It's it's a non AI droid. Uh, okay. Yeah. So America still has non AI okay. droids. Well, in that case, but. Are you telling me like there still isn't a person overseeing shit being like right? That's really worrying. Yeah. There should be if, a human there going. If America what? has right. <laughs> again after nine eleven, mm-hmm. um, what is the ISA? People that tell you to take off your shoes in case there's a bomb in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the full on. You know the, the, re- the reason we all have but, to throw out our yeah. Coca Cola bottles. But that organization. Yeah, 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 if yeah. they are that anal at this point, do you think there's not someone fucking reviewing Just stuff? With looking, at being ro- like, looking at the and robot being going, like, oh, that's weird. Considering we also got a call from the fucking government, the military department there saying a, there's a dangerous rogue AI robot AI Jesus that has on the a run. <laughs> yeah, ro- robot Jesus is out there, and it really wants to get up to Nomad. Yeah, yeah. 
And so she goes, uh, they Too both many go, questions. they go unimpeded through this checkpoint. Oh. No, no thing. And then they're flying, Ridiculous. they're flying. And then she does the whole kind of like robot Jesus magic, takes over the plane and they're going towards Nomad. And, uh, and at this point, no jets are scrambled. Yeah. Ralph Inson, by the way, is the general of the United States yeah. Defense Service. Sean called and him he's in the beginning. He said, that's Ralph, isn't it? That's that's Ralph doing a very good yeah, voice, Ralph. but but an American sort of like yeah I'm I'm but it's I'm me. totally sort I'm of Ralph in there. Innocent. So that's and Ralph Ralph's just sort of goes he he's literally the head of defense and he goes like we can't let him get to Nomad. Well, what are you doing about it? Yeah, scramble some fucking You're jets. Incompetent. Scramble anything. And again, it's like missiles. What do you what What do you mean? And the thing is, it's like it takes the general. He has to get to like the command center to because start giving orders. It's like no. You would call on a private military line Literally, and be like, like scramble jets right now. Where I need 20 yeah. F... I mean, uh, it's F-16s now, but let's say F-18s, F-20s. It's, so it's like, not... I want 12 F-18s up in the Just sky. Call it, no I man. want them to shoot down any flight yeah. that is not changing its trajectory. And it's like, so, and even again, if you have that plot point of like, so they've blocked that, we don't know what the trajectory of the line is. Just the lock region. the doors! <laughs> well, but no, but Just also, but also, to be fair... In terms of pure practicality, it's like, shoot them all down then. I don't care. So, oh, there are so many ways around this. All you this. need to do is call up Nomad and be like, don't let a single thing dock. Because they go there. Yeah! And they dock. And they fucking dock! And they dock! With nothing! No impediment. They also, dock. weird, it's like your orbital missile nuclear silo. Doesn't have any an anti guns or anti-aircraft system. What? Yeah, it's... This is, shoot it out of the sky! Shoot it out of the sky, or just go... Just, just, just lock all the doors. Yeah, just lock every door. Why? Oh, because the fucking Mech Jesus is coming up. <laughs> Mech just, Jesus, just calm. Just watch yeah. out. Uh, yeah. So that's what. That's literally like so bad. We haven't even got into the whole thing about how it was actually humans fought about the nuclear attack. Uh, we'll 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 go over it very quickly. Oh my god, because I hated uh, that bit. Basically, I hated the that. whole that's premise. You fell asleep. I fell asleep during the film. I won't lie. Um. It's not because I was tired. I was very up for it. I was very excited. And there's a part in the film where it drags, we man. go from kind uh, two of high, high octane action to just law building. And the law building is very bad. Yeah. Again, the script. We like, love the world, the world building, is but... beautiful. We go to like yeah. the new city. Well, we're fans of Lord of the Rings, so yeah, people yeah, know, yeah. we like law. You know, the, the, it, it, just for example, there's a little bit in between where like he's trying to get her to the city, and they go to this kind of like free state city, which is very cyberpunk, very kind of oh, like. Oh yeah, if, the if fucking... you've ever, if you've played Prey, it's very kind of like neon kind of like cybernetics, where like sure. the delivery drivers are all AI and all this kind of stuff, and like it's all very high tech, and. They completely waste it because it only lasts for about maybe fifteen minutes, and it over it just completely glosses over an entire culture, an entire city, yep. an, an entire, entire way ethical of dilemma. World. Yeah, and, yeah, with uh, the with the manufacturer guy really thought they were falling in love with his own own AI AI girlfriend, companion, which again it was like that was obviously a jumping off point for then uh, yeah. David John Washington's character Joshua to. Go into his thing, but we don't do anything with it. No, so we don't do anything. This whole transition it. of uh, like, oh no, AI are people now it just doesn't happen. Uh, and then a cop comes along, an AI cop, and you think you're going to have this really lovely set piece, like in this kind of like neo futuristic setting. But no, we get the most boring, the most yeah, boring. The action is so lame, and the this. action is so lame. It's bad. bad. It's not good. It's very bad. Such a waste. It's very bad. Could have done so, a lot, especially when you're dealing with AI people in particular, it's like unnaturally strong or flexible or <coughs> different from people. You could have had some like brutality or you could have had some frightening weirdness. Or, but no, they're just standing in a group and let themselves be shot by a guy standing in the corner, you know. You could have had like, yeah, the raid kind of levels so of we, fucking we won't lie. violence and brutality and yet make it clinical and weirdly... Uh, uncanny valley almost me and Sean got a little bit confused for going into this we thought that the director of the raid was the same as this yeah. because they're both called Gareth one's called Gareth Edwards one's called Gareth Williams no Gareth Edwards and Gareth Evans well there you go yeah exactly there you go that's why uh, and but that's the thing like Gareth Evans who did the raid 
is like pure action, and this and uh, Gareth uh, Edwards, Edwards is pure law, and it's it's crazy because like the fight scenes, the action scenes in the crater are just so flaccid. Yeah, they're crap. So flaccid. They are. They're it's not like, good. We're like they're really. We were bad. like we really would have liked Gareth Evans to be here yeah. <laughs> to just punch it up because they go to this beautiful city, and. It's a complete waste of everyone's time. I think you could have cut that scene out. And you could have taken it all out. All the, after the bus sequence, they could have cut out the city and the and the um, going back to the house yeah. from the beginning, and just had them be captured by the revolutionaries, Kemal yeah. and Abi and his crew, between the bus journey. Yeah. So after the bus journey, they get captured by Ken. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you could have cut out that entire bit and just had it be. From there, the whole going to the city and then going to the house, yeah, and getting revelations where the ring was left, which was so fucking obvious as well. Yeah. I and mean, what they thought they they were plot twisting for us because the ring, uh, just say so, Maya, um, Joshua's wife, like wore a ring that was also a tracker, and that's what he was using to get back to her. But like, yeah. it was left on the day of the attack from the very beginning. It's like, yeah. of course, it was. She felt he betrayed her and everything. It's like, so nothing there but we could have cut all of that out and just gone from the bus yep. to him being with with the AI resistance uh, didn't need anything to do with the city waste la- of time last big uh, plot thing that me and Sean really hated was at the beginning last when, well no because I want to get into <laughs> yeah, the, I want to yeah. get into the editing and the actual script writing because we touched on uh, the sort of like neon city yeah and how it's a big missed opportunity but like just to go in very quickly like the last plot point there, there are many others but like the big chi- the china one is a big one uh yeah the, uh, the, the nomad, nomad is a huge is a, fucking one is an unforgivably big plot point but the reason i think i think the point me and sean switched off was like when they were attacking the base after radiohead and all this sort of shit was that there's one of the one of the kind of like sub soldiers of the US military is kind of like boxed in by the police. So by the police. Not not the not army. The military. Not the military. The police. The police. Up. Just the local beat cops. Oh yeah. So you are also AI. AI, AI but yeah, they're all again, AI. The police. The police show up. It's like we're being invaded by America. Ah, send, and send the local department. They turn up to them and and then they shoot a bunch of missiles and blow up them as they approach. Uh, oh my god the woman in the mech yes that's what I'm you're talking, talking about the woman yeah. in the mech can't yeah. you so she so, so as they approach her um, so as they approach her uh, there's a really like quite cool scene where yeah, like she gets out the, the like mech. the police the police turning up and she gets out of the mech and she goes oh yeah I'll, just be, I'll be with you in a minute officer presses a button she puts her hands up and so looks like she's surrendering off. whilst the mech has already fired things while they're pulling up yeah, yeah. And then as as they're like, so who are you? They they then rain down. The missiles like come down yeah, and kill everyone. And blow up everyone. Yeah. And it's like, wow, really cool. But she doesn't run. She just stays there. And then literally 10 minutes later, more police turn up. And, and then, she can get and back then, in the fucking and then, mech. And then box her in the exact yeah. same situation. It's like, I'm surrounded by all stations. Like, yeah. she haven't moved. But she's not. But no, no, no. Yeah, she move. She's what are you not doing? surrounded. They're just in front of her. So yeah. she hides behind a mech. Yeah, yeah, bullet yeah, yeah. fire cover. It's like, you know what you could have done, love? You could have got into the mech and turned around because the back is clearly bulletproof. You and could you have, could have literally just walked away. You literally could have done anything. You could have ran into the cornfield and just ran. Yeah. But, but she some watches reason, more police more come people in. Come. Not military again. Police. Police. Just police. more police. Yeah. Uh, oh, America's evading. Better than the local yeah. boys. I mean, so S- that, send the police. That was like one of the big, the uh, like one of the final big plot points. I, I mean, I think so. Yeah. Well, a, we were just like, others. fuck this. I mean, uh, we both love the acting. Uh, in terms of the script writing, in terms of the utilization of environments, that also ties into the editing as well. Yeah. Which we both hate. Yeah. Like the editing the is quite bad. The editing is very. I'm not well versed in this, but the edit. The editing. I noticed the, the editing, editing was off. is incredibly subpar for the most of it. It's very shot reverse shot. It's very. It's kind of. It's just. It's very basic. Which is uh, really sad. Considering but then, such a strong art design. But then it kind of melds with like, melds with a bit of like fast pace storytelling. So like we'll get like a normal scene, like they're talking, they're talking, and all of a sudden we're doing a montage 
where time has passed. Oh, the bus sequence was so and weird. We're, and all of a sudden, we are going from the day to like months ahead. And the the editing is very montage It's very like... Oh, so all of a sudden they were at like a gas station, and now they're at like they pulled over, and then it's so the tight like the your interpretation the of, time of time is, fucked in is this, very di- it's very yeah. diluted. I have no idea diluted. how long this film was. No, I can't tell um, if it happened it, over a week or a month. The editor's way of getting around time no passing idea. instead of like maybe having a bit of faith in the cinematographer, yeah. which is to do quick snappy montages. We're going to go from A to B, and a week's passed, but I'm going to show the audience that a week has passed by going quick montages. Oh, they've travelled. Now they've gone to the toilet. And now, you know, now they're in a different environment. And it's like, oh, they're travelling through the environment. It's like, gee, fucking hell, man. This isn't, like, cheap TV. You know, you don't have to, like... You don't have to... You don't have to, like, fucking... Felt like a fucking Disney show. It was... Literally. It was, like, at the beginning... When he's traveling with the girl, we we've literally gone from like they've gone to the car, to this weird montage of them like on the road, and it's so out of place because the cinematography is very natural, like natural lighting, very like, very raw, kind of gentle. Yeah. And then we've gone from that kind of these like these long shots of like dialogue and like the environment. Mm. Letting nature play its course in the scene and like nice dialogue, and then it's like, and now they're on the run, and now they're on the run. We're in a gas station. Yeah. Oh, I'm having a piss. Which what, again, it's why just don't like, we go to heaven? You know, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like what the fuck? Which again, it's yeah. like plot holes abound there as well. It's like, well, you don't think the police would and notice that a car of theirs has gone wrong? But this happens. We've got, hap- we've this got tracking happens. on mobile phones now. You don't think the police can track their own cars? You don't think they're going to know? But this who's- happens multiple times, uh, at least three times, where the passage of time is not conveyed through. No, I have gent- no idea how no, long this film. No, through took. gentle editing, it's all the, like if there's a passage of time, you bet your ass you're going to get a montage. You're gonna get a fucking quick, snappy montage, and that for me is fucking cheap. Mm. Cheap. It's boring. It's like, how do we, how do we tell the audience that time has passed? Well, they've got to be travelling, and then cut. We're at a, we're at a different location, then we're doing something else. We're on the road, and it's just like. And then she's asking, it, "Do you, uh, yeah? Do I go to heaven? Do I go to heaven? And <laughs> Fuck like, off! And you're blending in like questions yeah. of morality within this like fast-paced montage." And it, it is it is bizarre. It is so jarring. It's bizarre. It? It's jarring. And it, it's funny that it's you just... said that because again, like you know, my, my wife's an editor. I've done editing. Yeah. I I was so happy to hear you say at the end of it because you've not had much editing experience. No, you were like, no, no, at all. you were like, the editing is terrible. It's mm-hmm. like it is. It is. It's, yeah. it's just. It's it it's 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 worrying that I notice that. It's it delves for you between, and Fiona sure is one thing, but if I notice that, that's concerning. It delves between very very basic like storytelling editing, which is sort of like you know shot reverse shot, wide shot, flat. you know, very flat telling the story, to this kind of like zippy montage to sort of like bring two timelines together. And again, together. it's like, is this a day, two days, a week? And then, how, how and then long? when we get to the, with the action sequences, too slow. Way too slow. God, the, not enough, not that enough weird? pace. Yeah, the not action enough pace. So l- they were just very lengthy and, and I don't, lame. And I don't mind the kind of slow action. Like, we, we love the raid. That's built off, like, very, no, the like... the raid is not slow action sequences. But no, 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 but in terms of the editing, there's a lot of, like, space. There's a lot. There's, is there? There, but it's fast cut. I think No Country for Old like, Men is a like, good example. But it's like fast cut, and then there's like breathing room. It's always got breathing room to like let sure. you immerse it. And you're right, Old Country, uh, No Country, no for, country old for Old Men. Like the action scenes you know, and that of like the gun fight. Yeah, that, and, I and think that's is a great example yeah, of like I, a slow fight. Yeah, that and is great. So you can do it. You know, you yeah, can you can, can pace done. it very well. But I'd have to see the raid again. But the. But the editing and the in the action sequences is just so. It's just so generic. Yeah. And there's no sense of pace, no sense of timing. No. There's no sense of urgency. No. Um, Again, everyone, it's like you're every, sitting everyone on everyone the most is, dangerous thing, in the world, according to your enemy, the America. Mu- the mu- the and they're just is, letting the music, that shit slide. The music is very tame. 
it's very tame and like we're talking like you say we're talking literally about a super weapon that can literally take over yeah. technology and again they just got two people bobbing around the two Americans the, the, the German yeah. woman who was great but like the German woman it. and Ron Perlman's younger brother <laughs> I'm going to um, send in some but, robots and they're, and they're and just some driving massive, and some massive tanks oh they were, that's later but yeah. to be fair, trying to catch them up is like, oh, we're just having two people drive around to try and find them. Are you fucking serious? You yeah. think America's going to just do the bare minimum? Well, you think any superpower who has the money and the resource, because, I mean, America's spending more than a trillion on its defense budget every year. Yeah. And, so and, you're telling well, me and, and they only is, have two people more. just driving around. It's like, they'd have entire fucking units. They'd have armies. Point. They'd be... In armies They'd be... Do- yeah. Yeah. Sorry. If they're, if they're the world police that is literally like exactly. the, no, the nomad also, if, goes but, around but, particularly if like violating your international yeah, airspace particularly based off what you've set up of like American can just do whatever the fuck it wants at this point you think they've just got two people driving around nah, in the we car? Nah we, we got a spec up team we don't want to cause too much trouble you've literally yeah. got a fucking doomsday yeah. satellite going around and we'll what get into the tanks what do you mean, well. what do you mean we, do, we, do, you, we don't want noise yeah. we've got to keep it on the low down you've literally got yeah. a fucking doomsday James it's Bond like you've turned satellite the moon it's like you've turned the moon into a gun. Everyone yeah. knows it's there. You can't ignore what it. What do you mean you're playing it by fucking yeah. it? Like, what, what do you. Are you fucking what? serious? Yeah. Why? Be consistent. Yeah. For God's sake. Exactly. But yeah, you know, we, 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 we talked very. Me and you talked about, like, the imagery. Like, we can kind of tell what he's going for in terms of the grand imagery of, like, it's like, a, like you said, it's like, a, it's like an angel, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah it's, he wanted the image, he wanted an AI, an artificial image of Azrael, the sword of Damocles, hanging over the planet, kind of thing. The mm. nomad is, you know, Azrael yeah. and the sword of Damocles. Literally. It's, 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 yeah. It's this terrifying human belief book construct, you know, that is there to bring down the hammer of God onto the people. Mm-hmm. And. Gareth Edwards obviously like really wanted that image. He wanted it so badly. He didn't. He did. He tried to make it work, no matter how badly. Yeah, it kind of comes off. And I think the Nomad as a concept could could work. probably work. Yeah. Again, if you talk about like how they purged all other weaponry and how it's an intimidation tactic, like if you again if you have Azriel hanging over you, yeah, um, constantly, it's like a reminder to everyone of like, mm, don't mm, fuck with this. Yeah. But again, the way this film does it, it's so it, <laughs> easily so com- holds, easily compromised, yeah, yeah. easily <laughs> compromised, as they've shown in the fucking film, yeah. when they just fly up to yeah. the nomad and yeah. they just. Get on board. Just get on board. There's nothing to we, be like. We can't let her get on board. But then Whatever. Sh- oh damn, she got on board. <laughs> oh no. It's always Shucks. just like okay. It's like it's like just shoot down anything that's in its area. Lock the doors. Lock the doors. <laughs> Lock the doors. Lock the damn doors. Just shut it down. Shut it. Damn! You know, if you know that some terrible super weapon is coming to compromise your super weapon, you'd probably lock the doors. Yeah. Um, but that's a lot of it. It's it, there's a lot of I hate to say the word style over substance because that's exactly what it is. But it is though, isn't it? It is it's exactly it's, that. It's a lot of very beautiful style. Mm-hmm. A lot of kind of and it is and, beautiful. I mean, and me and you, we talked about the things we loved. The Buddhistry imagery, the 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 AI yeah, the art bit design, in the mountain village, and the Buddhist AI. These, and these all are the that. bits these that really beautiful. hit home, and we would literally just we, me and Sean had a little conversation beforehand where we were talking about you know the Nomad could work really well if it wasn't manned by humans, if it's just an a drone, it's yeah, just a it big just old a drone, drone would make sense. That is hubris. You know, incarnate, incarnate. Yeah, man. like it's like, oh, we hate AI, but here's a big old drone that goes yeah. around the world and destroys things. Like you, you're hypocritical. You know, you 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 don't realize yeah. like that you've actually created like a doomsday weapon. Particularly because the film undercuts its own complexity by oversimplifying it. There's yeah, oh, we mentioned, yeah. but there's there's one very important line yeah. when. Um, David John Washington, when Joshua was captured by the AI resistance, and Ken Watanabe's character basically reveals, he just says, he's like, and I say reveals, it's like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to believe you, though? Like, 
Mm-hmm. It could be biased on your part, but sure. Let's say that you're telling the truth. But he basically says, he's like, so the whole nuclear... He was like, do you know that the whole nuclear attack on Los Angeles was due to a coding error by humans? It wasn't even AI. It was humans making a mistake and they just blamed us for it to justify having a war. And it's like, one, that changes everything. everything. And how and does, and how and does, two, uh, how does they react to it? He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> he just doesn't. He just goes, Oh yeah. Tommy Tamaya. Oh yeah. <laughs> Which again <laughs> completely changes his character's no, no, philosophy no, no. of like AI are problematic because his parents were killed in the uh, the LA attack and all this and it's half the justification of well it's it's the entire justification of why humans distrust the AI is like, Oh this nuclear attack happened but no the film was like, No, actually it was just humans and it wasn't yeah. really complex. It was a coding error, which one would never fucking happen. I'm sorry, that yeah. would never Happen. Oh, whoopsie! Oh, absolutely yeah. whoopsie. blew up the bomb in LA. Destroyed oh, shut! Are you fucking oh, kidding me? Oh dear! So the whoopsie. film undercuts its own complexity in that way. It's like, oh no, it's just black and white. It does an Avatar where it's just like, oh no, humans are just bad. Yeah, there's pieces terrible. of shit. There's no, there's no shades of grey. Yeah, I would have liked the idea. It was like, oh no, some radicalist AI got sick of humans and decided yeah. to get rid of them, yeah. and then it made it more difficult for the rest of the AI. But the film was like, no, no, no. It turns out it was humans' fault. And they're just taking AI, and AI is just inherently right. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to think? I'm a, I'm, I too am a I, Homo sapien. I too am a Homo sapien. Like and you're I such as yourself, like raging war on yeah. people and Apparently, smashing just like violence. That's it. Because again, it's just that thing of like, so humans are just about violence and domination. It's like we also do beautiful things. There's more to it than that. Yeah, this is what AI was supposed to be as well. It's like a reflection of that. But it's like, no, AI are just all the good bits, and yeah. humans are just the bad bits it's like, yeah. fuck off yeah exactly um, incredibly fr- and again that was the bit you fell asleep for that is the bit and I this, literally fell asleep for this huge um, revelatory moment that again, changes I, I'll say it now I was absolutely stoked to see this film yeah I was stoked and I fell asleep <laughs> fucking hell that doesn't happen often guys you know what guys the, just skip the entire review and skip to just this bit I was so to see the film and I fell asleep and I fell asleep that yeah. tells you everything uh, but yeah that's a huge yeah. moment that should change his uh, Joshua's entire character because he's like yeah. oh my god all my life I believed that AI were just as but problematic the, as people yeah. but it was just program or whatever but like they but no 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 it was literally humans fault and they used AI as an excuse this changed everything. Yeah. But no, no, in the film he's just like, just tell me to see Maya. It's I just weird. want to see my wife. It's Fuck weird because for a two hour film there is very little explained. There's very little yeah, they so much on. time to go into so depth, much time and they to go chose into it and to they not got, do it. And they got and they got caught up in the whole very standard blockbuster yeah. chase kind of yeah. doomsday plot get the girl who is the key to everything she's the key to everything and we're on the clock now people we're yeah. on the clock and we've got to hurry up AI and it's a doomsday because they're not people yeah that's it but throughout the film we're going to show you oh AI are just like people but yeah. actually they're better they're... than people cool well I'm sorry I was born then I'm sorry I'm a yeah, person yeah 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 but I don't, uh, I don't know what you expect me to take away from this, that people are inherently worse than yeah, the things you we wanna, can make. If you, wanna see a great fi- if you wanna see a great film about AI and humanity, watch The Animatrix. Or the... watch Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, like, I love The Animatrix because they have those two shorts at the beginning mm. about the fall of mankind in the Matrix universe. Yeah. And it's very much about the tensions of AI and humans. And there's lots yeah. of scenes where, like, for instance, there's, like, there's a scene where... Uh, there's like a an AI woman and she gets like stripped naked and beaten by a sledgehammer and when she's beating like her skin comes off and it exposes mm. the metal it's horrible mm. it's like a real like a really good like kind of like rape analogy yeah like totally violated totally strung out lynched you know and what's the AI's response breaking into a home and shooting a whole family it's really yeah. good at showing like there is pain on both sides, yeah, and both sides are actually just like us. Just like us, exactly. They are just. If anything, that's Rather the whole the, point the, of this the, discussion. They are. They are us because they yeah. are created to be like us, and they are supposed to be the next evolutional step. Yeah. Rather but than they, it's just like they're super people. Yeah. In this film is like they're they're humans, but way better. And they're like, su- oh, they're, okay. I guess basically then humans are just irrelevant now. Yeah. We should just get rid of humans. And now. I appreciate the whole bringing in Buddhism to kind of 
counteract that there were there you know we've talked about it yeah previously, the subtlety like, was never yeah. this film's forte but it's it's a real shame because again I think this comes to kind of like the end of what me and Sean hate about it mm. because we've talked about what we hate yeah. about it yeah, the plot yeah. holes but like what we hate about it is that it's selling us short of very yeah. interesting ideas. Yes. There are lots of really good, interesting ideas. And me and you have had so many discussions about the potential of these ideas, the potential of these stories, yeah. these threads. I mean, uh, I, I was talking about the bit where we're in like the neon city and, yes. and, and you know, she's looking after the, she's looking after Alfie mm-hmm. and she's like, the AI girlfriend. And yeah. she's like, Oh, what would you like to eat? Ice cream. So my first extinction, my first instinct was like, AIs hey, don't eat. Yeah, how does that work? How do you eat ice cream? But sure, whatever, whatever. I'll let it go. Let's have a nice little moment between the two characters. You know, And but for me, I thought we were going to have a really good set piece in this like really modern cyberpunk city. No, it's brushed over in one fight scene yeah. where no one even dodges. <laughs> That's the other thing. No one can hit each other. It's like Mr. Piccolo. It, we've got AI. AI. We've got just AI. dodge. We've got AI, and they can't hit shit. Mm-hmm. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> this is AI. Yeah, again, it's like, I'm sorry, why have we replaced humans with AI? Yeah. In this case, they can't hit people? shit. If they can't, <laughs> they can't shoot shit. better than humans, yeah. what's the fucking point? Yeah. But that's the thing, like, yeah. you know, our, our hate, and it's not hate, it's just... It's we're, frustration. We're, we're, we're poking holes in it. Because we're not poking holes. We're looking at the holes that already there. exist. And we're basically saying, you know, there is so much an offer here. And there's yeah. so much yes. really, really great potential. Yeah. And we love the world. We love the art design. Oh, my we God. We love yeah. the setting. And we're just a bit disappointed that it's been framed in a very generic, very... Simplistic. Simplistic. Almost like childish. It feels like an angry teenager wrote this. Yeah. About being nihilistic and being like, oh, well, maybe, like, fuck people. Fuck people. Point. Angel imagery. Yeah. Let's go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buddhism. I, too, have been yeah. on Tumblr and DeviantArt for yeah. a long time. It's um, probably outdated for me to say that. I don't know. No, it screams of DeviantArt. <laughs> like, it does, but... Well, yeah. yeah. Does anyone go on that anymore? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that, but yeah, but that's kind of like our takeaway from it. It's mm-hmm. like, it's... There are moments of, like, let's not get... Let's not shy away from the fact that the acting is absolutely brilliant and it is it is my god it it's, is. it's brilliant yeah like it's great they really pull their weight um and it's a bit of a slow burn as well because when i first saw it, i was like yeah it's pretty good then when i was like thinking about it, i was like no actually the acting is really good like yeah there are re- like it's it the, there are some characters that don't really pull their weight and no well, i'm not gonna say pull their weight but like well, don't they really hit the mark don't hit the mark and they yeah. don't get enough Enough time, that's yeah. it. They just don't get enough they're, time. And then just not given enough. It's not just about time as well as just like they're not given Material. enough to work with. Yeah. Like Ken Watanabe has nothing to work with. Same. Uh, he's yeah. there as yeah. an exposition yeah. guy. And he's uh, so little to work with. And uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, God. The I'm General? On, I'm on the raid. Who are we talking about? Uh, I'm talking about Jimma Chan. Oh, she yeah. She doesn't get enough. Bless her. Bless her, you know... Yeah, she's a really up and coming actress, and you know she's been in Humans. She's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, she keeps getting cast. Casted as uh, you are a robot woman. <laughs> You're a robot woman. You are a robot woman. Um, but you know she doesn't get enough time, and she re- and but you're right. The scenes that she's in, she really tries. Yeah, and I've got to say, you know, in terms of directing, I've got to say, in terms of like actor director, Gareth Edwards really does bring out a lot in them. He really sure. You can tell yeah. these people really believe in the project. Yes. They do. They do really they believe really in do. it, and it shows. Like they, they do. Like they really want to give it their all. Yeah. Unfortunately, the editing and the script is just very flaccid, and which brings me on to my last topic of the evening, mm-hmm. which is that I believe that this was watered down for an international release. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no, there's no evidence of it at all. I'm going purely with hunch, so whatever I say is purely with a pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. But things that we've talked about, where is China? Where are these big fucks? Where, super- where is China? Where are the superpowers? Uh, it feels like that this... Because Gareth, 
in terms of like his first film, Monsters, is a very you know there's a lot of like themes going on in terms of like humanity and morals and especially government. Mm. You know, how does the government deal with this kind of job? And it, and he does it very well. This really feels like a a very watered down version of what his potential is. Mm. Uh, it for me, it feels like there's been a bit of studio interference. I can't prove that, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say there was, but I just it feels like there was a very good idea. Studio took a, the studio took a chance on him, but then they also stepped in and went, "Look, dude, we've got to sell this to China." It's like, yeah, we, we do. So maybe not mention them. Mm. Maybe just not mention China at all. Mm. Oh, but we could like mention them and like, no, 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 no. I'm telling you, just just don't even mention them. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we're going to sell this to the East, or well, they love America bad, America colonial, mm-hmm. America this, America that. And for me... It's it, very original. It, it just, it, it it feels like there's a, there's a, there's quite a bit of like, how do we market this? Yeah. Because this is, as we go from the beginning, this is a big risk. It's a big risk from studios to put their faith in Gareth and I feel like there was quite a lot of middle ground met between them yeah. in terms of how to sell the Which film. Which I guess is understandable. It is understandable. To a degree. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Gareth is not a billionaire. He can't fund his own films. No, and he's not a proven franchise. And yes, he's not exactly. stealing off the... He's not standing on the shoulders of giants. Like, this isn't Jim. everything Disney... Well, even that, but like everything Disney is doing lately. Yeah, but, exactly. This is an original, yeah. an original concept. It is very high yeah. risk. Very high risk. I can understand. Super high risk. And they took a gamble, and I just imagine that they were like, it's a big gamble, but Gareth, we got to have some talks about the edit yeah, and how we're going to sell it. We need to get the... We need to get the seats filled, so we need like the every man to like it. Yeah. We need the action. We need the simplicity plot. We also don't need to offend anyone. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, uh, you know, we're from the UK... Americans will say the same. We're the kind of countries that can take the piss out of ourselves. Yeah. Because we've had that. Like, America has the power at the moment. We had the power. We can take the piss out of ourselves very confidently. Yes, it would be. It's not. It's it not. Be, it's not. Um, arrogant to not. Yeah, you exactly. Know, we should, so we, should, we, should, we should. So it's it, it's quite an easy sell in terms of selling it to an international audience. It's like, how about we lean heavily on the... Humanity bad, America bad. Hmm. You know, from an international point of view, I think it's it's quite a good selling point. Yeah. It's like this is very much an Asian story it's set in Asia, Southeast Asia. Very much highlights the benefits of Southeast Asia, which is like Zen Buddhism, sort of melting point, melting pot culture. Yeah, it really does play into that. And yeah. it so be- I feel that that's kind of that's kind yeah. of almost taking precedent a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I won't debate you on that one. I think that's a very fair point. And um, I suppose the other thing I can say is like my frustration of like you could have just used America as a example of a superpower out of control to yeah. hold up a lens to everyone else, but the film was not brave enough to do it for whatever reason, which is probably, as you said, probably down to interference and about selling it because at yeah. the end of the day, it is product and you must sell product. You must sell product. And that's yeah. fair. I mean, it's 80 million. It is, which is a not, big chunk of money. Yeah, which we, is again not the biggest budget in terms of like big blockbusters, but this is but it's a risk. But it's, it's a, still eighty million. Like it's I don't an eight, get this. It's an eighty like, million. Gamble. Oh, it's two hundred and fifty million to make fucking or three fifty million to make Ant Man three, and it's like why the fuck are you spending that much money on Ant Man yeah. three? What the fuck is going because on? They were like, oh, they love Marvel. Yeah, they're like ants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's not about Ant Man three love itself. Ants, it's about Sean. the fact it's like. This is not worth that kind of money. Yeah, surely. But yeah, so no, I I agree as well. I think you know you could have done, I. But I also think is like I don't think you disagree, but it's like there's a way. It's like you could have had both. You could. You have, really could have. You could have just yeah. used America as a particular example of a superpower running out of control and doing things without. Yep. Uh, offending anyone but no with that particular line by Ken wants to know it's like oh no just America bad oh yeah fuck yeah. you I'll be fucked up fuck off oh yeah we, come on we, we, ju- we, ju- we jumped the bow on this yeah, one yeah you could have used it as, a, as an example but like please let people think about things it's just um, yeah you know but it's like oh don't want to don't upset someone else somewhere else and it's like um, what are we making 
this for what are we doing here at this point but yeah you know uh, but i do i do think um you're right and you have a very good point there and again it is a risk it's not a proven franchise yeah it's you know they wanted to sell it i'm just i just don't think that treating the audience like fucking children is the way yeah. forward because i'm annoyed you're annoyed yeah i think most adults uh, most average shows are also going to be annoyed because we're not stupid as yeah, audience members. The, yeah. We know what's going on. We don't like being taught patronised and being protected. We're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We don't want to get too complex because, you know, you're children. You don't. Yeah, oh, this, Let's, is a, this is a sci fi. Yeah, again. Uh, this is some zany yeah. ideas out and again, there. So Watch out. We yeah, can't yeah, trust yeah. you to think for yourself. We have to sanitise it to make sure that yeah. you're being told the right thing. You know, we've been around on whatever social problem is the issue, whatever is the hot topic issue of like, of of the moment, whatever mm-hmm. is the hot button political issue. It's like, no, no, no. Let us tell people what they should think. Yeah. Let's not let them think for themselves. And I think this film fucking reeks of that. And no one likes that. No, The second someone knows, they're be- the second someone feels they're being talked down to, you've lost them. Yeah, you've lost them. They're not going yeah. to believe you anymore because it's like, I know you're telling yeah. me what to think yeah. you're letting me think yeah you know and that was the same thing like it, it by the end of it it reeked of marketing it and, was profitizing yeah. at that point it was it telling really us what to think it, it, it was like there was so much talent on display mm-hmm. just just let you know while while we're filming this we're on the imbd page and uh the trailer for it is uh gareth in in the field filming in yeah. thailand just saw a clip there where he was like, "Yeah, I based it off Blade Runner." Did I'm you? like, "Did you?" It, they had they had like clips of Tears in the Rain and all that sort of stuff, and I was like, "Yeah, with Roy Batty." It's like, and I'm like, "You are so far off the <laughs> mark." <laughs> yeah. And again, it's like, uh, I get that for marketing issue uh, purposes, obviously, but it's like you uh, Blade Runner no. let people think. Yeah. And let's and let's look at the and look how Bla- successful and, it and was. Look at the recent Blade Runner. Didn't shy away. From what it was, it didn't. It like we always like yeah. me and you always have this joke. Like Blade Runner was a beautiful moment where like they advertised it as an action film, and then all these kind of like meatheads came in like, oh yeah, I've got some like android fucking action film, and it was a fucking the opening shot was just <laughs> fields of, of algae of algae yeah. and fucking bugs just being Batista, right. yeah. like. I'm a, replica yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I'm, oh gonna, I'm gonna make leech stew yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. and uh, and that's what that's why me and you love that film because it's unapologetically yeah. its own identity it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't treat the audience like an idiot yeah it, it just it's there to tell its own yeah. story the advertisement agency was there to kind of get people in the seats but it, it was unapologetically its own thing although I it didn't although, want to yeah. sell itself short basically although, although I dislike that even now it's like well we spent 300 billion on this film so we have to literally trick people into what this film is to get them in the seats yeah scene. that's like, true maybe don't spend so much scale yeah. your films back a bit you know, like that's what I like about the creator. It's like, look, this is a scaled down Hollywood. Only eighty mil. You didn't get to the hundred mil budget. You yeah. know, which again, eighty mil sounds insanely huge, and it is still. I guess we could then talk but, about the ethics of filming in Southeast Asia versus America and England in terms of pay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. maybe the reason. It's well, cheap we should is... look. We, we should look into the production crew themselves because were yeah, they, we don't we don't know enough. Were they uh, yeah an American uh, or? European at least crew that went across Southeast Asia, or they just lean very heavily on the fact that Southeast yeah, Asia. Yeah, we, we we don't we don't know enough. Not have, and we, I don't want to comment on that. Like, we're yeah, not we don't we don't know enough. Yeah, we just don't know enough. But again, it's like, but to be fair, it's like maybe scale your films back a bit. Don't yeah. go so insane. Yeah. Um, don't spend so much money on CGI reshoots, overpaying actors. Again, I'm an actor, and I don't believe actors should get paid this much. At one this, of, point. One this of, is this is absurd. This is a farce. What is the great art anymore? This is a fucking rigmarole. One of the great triumphs of this film was the use of real actors with just CGI heads. Yeah, that was the one of the. If you have to take anything away from this film, it's the use of actors acting. With mm-hmm. very minimal CGI. Did I even talk about the fact that I empathise so much with like Oculus Rift face? Oh, you were saying, yeah, I did, yeah, 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 yeah. The like the fact that it, it it's so the, I didn't the absolute need triumph. You didn't say human features. it was just great acting. Good. Yeah, we talked about it with the puppetry. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Uh, 
But like that, like if you're gonna like take away the triumphs of this, it's the practical effects. It I know they're very expensive, and this is why you get people like Ang Lee, who's like, oh, I wish I didn't spend so much on the CGI. Oh fuck off! And it's you didn't like, pay those. Well, your studio didn't pay those. Yeah. Yeah, those CGI artists properly. Anyway. There, you know, there there is a there is a balance of doing it, and the biggest triumph out of this is the use of practical effects mixed with CGI. Yeah, this is a great example. This yeah. film is going to age beautifully. It will. It's going to age yeah. so well. It will age amazingly. You know what? Again, looking at the CG, like the robot heads and stuff. Uh, you know what? I'm, I really don't see the CG. No. You know, it's quite it's going to age so well. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. So we're, 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 we're watching. We're watching so the trailer well. right now, and the wor- and the worst bits. The worst bits. When they go to the goddamn nomad, yes, yeah, so as you said, it's like it's like nomad, an Elysium man. moment, isn't it's, it? Oh yes, yeah, so yeah. it's, like it's Elysium all over again. Yeah, the nomad, which was so grounded, and then like let's go to a cold space station where everything. And I guess that's the point. It's like oh, this is humanity at its worst. It's like a cold space station orbiting Earth. Where it's like okay, do that. But but better but better than this better than do a it, star do it well disc. yeah and it it that is like probably the worst part of the entire film is when they go to the nomad it feels very yeah. disjointed very unrealistic yes very we're, we're kind of we're that really and jumping being prisoners for the when he shuts her down at the the United States embassy which again makes no sense no just makes no sense no. but let's not even go into that it's just it's a stupid fucking sequence that makes no sense well let's end it on the fact yeah of the last shot which me and you both oh, love it was a great shot and let's end it on a really good note which is at the end of the entire film they take Spoiler, I've said this like 50 <laughs> This times. is a bit redundant, but yeah. Um, they they shoot, they, they destroy the Nomad. Um, there was a plot device that was quite obvious, I thought, which was that uh, she, uh, uh, what's her name? Sorry. Maya. Maya has sold her likeness. This is kind of established like halfway through the yeah, film. Yeah, which is also weird. It's like, so, oh, that's the martyr, the yeah. daughter of the yeah. creator. It's like, Oh, just sell your likeness. So he sees her everywhere. Yeah, and it's not everywhere, but there's one scene was like, "Oh, Maya is just an AI replica in the trailer." I was like, "No, she wouldn't have done that. She's a fucking terrorist by international law." Apparently. Yeah, you but wouldn't do that. So the, so the whole point is, you think that... Bin Laden selling his likeness? Around. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not an option. Don't be fucking dumb. Sorry. Yeah. Because you want it again. Because Gareth, you wanted that scene where yeah. he's like, oh, it's my oh, wife. Yeah. Oh, but it's not. It's oh, an AI. Because no. aren't they the same? It's like, yeah. dude, this is so fucking dumb. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Fuck off. It should have been a, it should have been a very like, someone weird. who looked like well, it. Well, w- and, and maybe like a weird scene where it's like, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Maya. Yeah. Like a, like a whole scene, not just a, not a montage. Yeah. No, again, again montage has come back. But even so, even montage has come back. It's like, yeah. no, no, there's too many questions about yeah. this. Again, this is an, this is a international criminal. Yeah. By, by America's reckon stance. You can't sell your fucking no, yeah. this space. Not they they will nuke the village yeah. you're in over the space. You kidding me? We're not talking about like you know defiance. What we need, Tom. We're talking about nuking yeah. your village to the ground. You know what we need, Tom? Face. We need more Charles Manson clones. We, we do. do. They might not even be. They're, do, they're not. More, they're not like him at all. But I want to see. Like, I want no, to see his but, face but, around. That's going to be really yeah, good for he, public psychology. But and health. he's cool, Sean, yeah. and we need to get more fucking. of that in the public eye. And you know what, Sean? <laughs> let's hell. get a few fucking. Let's get a few Hitlers and Mao's on. Yeah, well. sure. Why not? Absolutely. Why not? Get again, Stalin's. Not, get a few Stalin's get in there few, as well. Absolutely. And again, we're not saying my is. Those people. No, it's not like, at all. Not in at all. terms of the way the, 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 nora- the, the America notoriety. has built it up yeah. and the notoriety, she is. So she basically is. Yeah. You're not going to begin. He wanted the image. He yeah. wanted the moment, and he didn't. And he just couldn't justify it. Yeah, but again, but like you say, but again, to go back on the uh, on one of the really beautiful parts, which is yeah. the ending. The ending. Which, so uh, basically, there's a bunch of Maya bots on the station. And they put the... Met- so, 
I've not even... Cause it's, oh, God. It's too much, we it's, haven't even gone into that. We haven't even gone into it. It's too much of a discussion. It's too much. It's too much of a discussion. Much. And this, um, this review is there's getting a, out of hand. There's a, there's a whole f- sequence where they can take your memory and put it into a AI. Yeah. That is a lit, That is like a whole hour worth of content. Just yeah. us talking about the ethics and the fucking... Which is never touched on. It's like, oh, we hate AI, but we're going to copy people. Oh, we'll just take consciousness we're and just put take it into an AI. We're just going to into a thing that dies in 30 seconds. Yeah. Are you fucking serious? Anyway, it's all right. But anyway, so at the end, uh, when the spaceship's falling down, uh, Joseph's character gets to finally meet Maya again after all this time. Yeah. And it is quite a lovely scene. They're in like a little field. It is field, quite nice. And they get to finally kind of reconnect after so long. And it's lovely because there is a little bit of hesitation between them, but then it's kind of like, no, no, like we were both kind of like on the same boat. And, uh, but the best scene, like one of the, it's such a lovely ending, which is basically the nomad crashes. Joseph's dead, but Alfie survives because she's shot off in a we escape get, pod. And we get a lovely image of Alfie standing over the wreckage with the two nomad wings coming yeah. out in front of her, but they look like, Angel, angel wings. wings. I don't know if you picked that up, Tom. Yeah. Oh, it was no, very subtle. Really? Yeah, it was, really, angel wings. it was really it? subtle. But um... uh, but yeah, she's standing on this sort of this sort of desert plateau mm-hmm. with the crashed nomad there, and everyone's kind of running out. Yeah, well, it's, very, it's, it's very it's it's very it's it's very uh, Independence Day kind of ending. <laughs> yeah. But what really sells it is that it doesn't have Alf- a star that assaults someone for telling a joke. <laughs> Keep your fucking keep my fucking AI wife's name out your motherfucking mouth. I think Sean. you should be worried about what your wife has in her mouth. To yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'll fucking <laughs> I'll fucking do it. What are they gonna do? Cancel me? <laughs> <laughs> me yell, sir. Me yell, sir. Um, but anyway, uh, Madalena, who we love, um, yeah. she's looking over the desert plateau. The nomad is destroyed, and people are cheering her name, Alfie, 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 and she just does this. She just does this amazing take, yeah, where she is so devastated because she's lost. Because she's parents. lost both of them. Yeah, because Joshua dies up in Nomad. He can't get out. She's literally. She's, he like she saves kno- her life. and she knows this. Yeah, and she goes from being devastated to hearing her name being called to building up this confidence and this euphoria. Where she just kind of like breaks a laugh and looks upon this plateau of free people and smiles. And it's mm-hmm. just wonderful. It's beautiful. And it's a great ending shot. And it's just amazing. Brilliant. Again, it was one where it was like, you had that image in your mind for yeah. a long time. And you know what? It's a good one. And that's what I'll say, uh, Gareth, the directing for the most part of it. In terms of directing, in terms of like the actor's performance, you've done yeah. a fantastic, fantastic job. Fantastic job. An amazing yes. job. You need a bit more work with action. But oh we'll get God, there. Yeah, yeah oh you'll get God, there. Yeah. You'll get there. Um, and you need a writer. And you need a good another, writer. And you need another, it was him and someone else, uh, but whoever that someone else was did not do yeah, the job. Yeah, it, it was him and Chris, Chris Weitz. Weitz. Sorry, yeah. Chris Weitz. Um I feel you really let things down because Gareth is a director above all else. He's got a lot of other things yes, going on. He's, but yeah, Chris, I'm we needed sorry. You, we needed you to come yeah, in to really polish to that shit up. Where the fuck were you? Unless... He didn't have any. They did Rogue One. That's why. He could, that's why. He, that's why he trusted him. Yeah, but, but unless he didn't have any real control. No, this guy wrote about a boy, Mister and Mrs. Smith, which is good. Golden Compass, which is not. Rogue One, which is decent. Hmm. Again, studio. Maybe studio, studio interference, interference right? Yeah. 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 yeah fair. They're too good. It They're ma- too good. It doesn't it's match not. up quite, does it? Yeah. Yeah. So but yeah, to Gareth and Chris. Fair play. Looks like you had to work with a lot of shit. Uh, very well directed. Incredible art design. Very well acted. And uh, a shame. A shame. A shame. A decent film that could have been so much yeah. more. It's still a decent it's film. It's there. Like, the, the elements are there. A nice little popcorn movie that just didn't quite pop. This thing could have been, maybe that's our frustration, this thing could have been iconic. This could have been a real turn. Yeah. This could have been proof of like, yeah, you don't need to do insert franchise. Yeah. Um, like, you can sell it on it being just great and interesting and deep. 
But this thing was interesting, but it wasn't deep and it wasn't great. No. But what we will say is that we are very pleased to see independent blockbusters come back. So pleased. Really and nice to even see. even though we have problems with it, Keep we are very, very happy to see it come back into the main Hollywood sphere. Absolutely. Really delighted. We're really happy to see original production design, world building, lore, and for us, I think that's why, even though we we could talk for hours about how we hate it, but overall we're still happy that it's out. And just and like you said, just just keep yeah. keep going. The fact that we've talked so much about it shows how much we care about yeah, it. Yeah, that we're passionate about it. Yeah, we like it more than we dislike it. Yeah, and we're just frustrated because yeah. it could have been so much more. Yeah, and it just. It didn't just fall at the last hurdle. It like couldn't even pass the first three. But the elements are there. Yeah. You know. And Gareth, just keep going, man. Keep going. Yeah, because you are you'll getting... Get it. You, you are getting going so strength close. Strength. Yeah, he's getting from strength to strength. And you're going to fucking nail it on the next one. Yeah. Absolutely. We have... I will watch your career with great interest. Great Send interest. Send Palpatine to Gareth. Great <laughs> interest. Cool. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Cheers Tom. Cheers for that. Yeah. Uh, that was that was that a was half creator. hour review. That was supposed to be a half hour review. It's two and a half hours now, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank yeah. you very much. Take care, everyone. Thanks. Take care. Bye.